Okay, I think we should be on. Let me just check a few settings. Stand by, anything can happen in the next half an hour. Yep, is working. Let me just check the audio. Mic check, mic check, one, two, three. Okay, I think we should be on. Perfect, welcome, thank you. Nikki, what, what? We can share this. It's good to be back, a random cast. A live stream, some mammoth presentation. It is live this day, Wednesday, the 13th of October, 2021, the year of our Lord, common era, CE, AD, 12.30ish PM GMT. So if you're watching this on YouTube after I've uploaded it, it is not live. It was live. Sorry for not giving you advance notice, but the universe has directed me to um, come and say hello. And I'm going to proofread a presentation for you, 28 pages, 1,000, no, 14,200 words. It is entitled, it is entitled, let me put me two thin, agreements, contracts, duties, obligations, beliefs, and preferences engaging the Roman legal systems of civil law, law, law of the land, law of the air, law of the water, L-A-W, Lima Alpha Whiskey, law, land, air, water. This is not to be construed as any kind of legal advice. This is a proofread of a document that I have just cobbled together don't seem to be actually on the video. Let me just change my settings and say hello and start the video. Ciao. Watch. I can just reach from the, uh, the settee or sofa as it is across the States. Let me um, copy the link. Share to your story, share to, share to a group, more options, copy. I'll just tell my uh, Telegram chat fam, we're having a live chat and then we shall begin. It is a large presentation, but it's, um, it's going to be explained to you in just a moment. Okay. My goodness. It's busy. I can't find my own groups. They are buried. Um, they are buried. I thought I'd to give you Facebook, SPL's trust, the first showing as um, we often go to the private domain via YouTube. And I thought I'd come in and say hello today, be a bit productive with you, get your thoughts and feelings. And what I'm about to present, it will be a couple of hours, get comfy while I'm posting the links, get a drink, get uh, settled, a pen and paper, and be warned, this will be downloaded and re-uploaded to my uh, YouTube account, IndieGlow. Nearly done. Trust and equity and trust group, admins and mods, open chat, and then I want the SPL's private chat. I'm going to continue on with catching up with my admin over the next few days. So if you are waiting for contact, that will be done shortly. It 
go back to Facebook so I can see your comments. And then let me get the document ready. This presentation follows on from my previous presentation via my Indiglo account on YouTube. And that video is entitled Lex Mercatoria Contract Maxims Common Law Gang Masters. And whilst we are all distracted with various current health, political, social, financial and religious events occurring worldwide, I, David, am here today to reconnect us with the task at hand and bring us all back on track here at SPLS Pro. This video is in response to the frequently asked questions that are asked of myself, Kevin, our admins and our Foundation Educational Private Trust, more or less on a daily basis from all souls across the realm. And what we have found within our discoveries over the years is a series of commonalities that underpin the international judicial, legal and financial systems, such as, and this list is not exclusive or exhaustive, ex ecclesiastical laws, canon law, contract law, tort law, maritime law, admiralty law, lex mercatorian, unidroit, Uniform Commercial Code, Title Code, Penal Code, Statutory Constitutional Codified and Non-Codified Law, Merchant slash Financial Institution Regulations of the Nation State Central Banks, Social Security Numbers, National Insurance Numbers, Legal Identifiers, EINs, CUSIPs, numbers in general, dates of birth, birth certificates, national identification instruments, names, persons, the legalese language and the Christian religion, focusing on established Christian nations, crown princes, princesses, the various crowns of the realm, kingdoms and monarchies, England, American, Commonwealth, so to speak, UK foreign occupied territories, so thank you for joining Nikki, Tilly, Kira. And like I say, this is going to be a big one. So if you're not ready for it or you haven't got a couple of hours free, then I understand. And um, this will be downloaded and re-uploaded to uh, Indiglo on my YouTube account. And it will also have the Lex Mercatoria video that's quite long, a couple of hours um, at least. I'm very passionate. I believe I've got a sore throat on that but the uh, complexity and the density of the information, which is very relevant and uh, critical, you know, criteria for considerations with, with how we find um, the Londinium Templars Roman legal system, and that being based upon the New World Testament, aka the heliocentric bibliotech, aka the basic information before leaving Earth, the Bible, I believe that was first coined by Alcoholics Anonymous, I do believe. And there are various editions of the Bible that help point us into or unto the righteous path of redemption, salvation and remedy, keeping clean hands, staying in honour and discharging the charges made upon our person, persona, in a civil capacity in a civil jurisdiction we're not focusing on criminal law here it's a civil administrative arbitrary uh, as as what we've come to know as aka charges complaints infractions infractions upon penal statutory so there is an awful a lot a, a huge uh, a monolithic amount of information regarding this sleeping giant known as the legal system and it is uh, parts of this presentation are applicable to all uh, centralized uh, European uh, Commonwealth foreign territories. As I've said, it is not up to date. It is um, been cobbled together from sources found upon our SPLS Pro domains across the last three years, and it will be subject to further citation and um, correction amendments going throughout but um, if you stick with it if you can take this all in one chunk then well done um, if you come back and you take it in parts you know you make the notes and you keep the the sections of the video the hours the points make a note of what i say when and then that will make it easier for you to index the points but um, unfortunately this can't be done in 10 minutes it's been ongoing 
for a very, very long time, hundreds, thousands of years, as you're going to find out. And um, as we get in our most frequently asked questions, issues of uh, civil, judicial, court, charges, property, um, title rights, uh, charges, discharge, uh, staying in on a conditional acceptance. I'd like to go through a bit of background and history and uh, certain areas of which some of you, I hope most of you, will find relevant, interesting and of some use, beneficial use. I was going to do some posts, but there's a lot of um, lifting going off and copying and pasting. And I thought we'll have an interactive chat. And I'll look at the comments. We'll go into Facebook SPLs first. Then it will be, like I say, uploaded and premiered on Indiglo in the near future. So without further ado, I shall continue on. The New World Testaments the, or Testament Bible stories are taken from the original Hebraic phonetic texts known as the first five books of the Bible, a.k.a. the Torah or Torah. These stories are seemingly borrowed, taken from Middle Eastern pre-Christian civilizations, such as, but not limited to, but one of the big ones that, that we found that mankind has found through our discoveries, the Enuma Elish. That is the story of creation before creation. So the Christian stories are in SPLS Pro's opinions. They're not original stories. Remember, the winners of wars and the conquerors of civilizations have the luxury of rewriting history as they see fit. The inner motives of world history and life cannot be understood unless our gaze is turned to that spiritual background which underlies the outer physical happenings. When we talk about initiates and initiates of self and self-governing and sovereignty, um, I'll leave it there, all right? It's a very much a spiritual uh, environment that we're in. Warship, worship, war, were, war, W-A-R, W-O-R, worship, warship. The results of former civilization epochs are carried into later ones by the personalities of history and are changed in the process, as we found, as we can prove. By studying the external aspect, we, we may not immediately recognize these impulses in their new form. They must be perceived as a deeply inward stream. Harun al-Rashid and his counselor, Arabism penetrates into the culture and civilization of Europe. The individualities of Alexander and Aristotle go forward with the evolution of Christianity. The Eighth Ecumenical Council as the earthly projection of a spiritual event. Ancient cosmic Christianity and King Arthur's Round Table, Arnold Brocklin, the School of Charters, Brunetto Latini, preparation of the Michael or Mikhail stream. So uh, I'm not gonna source some reference all of what I'm talking about. You will have got that from your journey with us and you will get the chance to ask questions and, and, and we will further expand upon this as a, as, as a family, as a unit, to, as a consciousness. Continued preparation of the Michael stream through the individualities of the Christian Aristotle Aristotelians and Platonists. Christianity illuminated in the school of charters through traditions of the ancient mysteries, the goddess Natura, Natura, the planetary intelligences and the spiritual powers in the fixed stars. Enter Claudio. Radiations of the living spirituality of the school of charters. Until the time of the school of charters, the Platonic souls are working and then the Aristotle Dottelian, who now began to descend from the super sensible to the physical world and teach in the Dominican order. So those of you that have joined and uh, enrolled with our equity and trust Jedi orientation will have had the revelation of uh, equity and trust and the uh, seeming beginnings of that, where it came from um, before uh, Christianity itself stemming from the Middle East. So there's a lot of information I can extrapolate upon and put into segues through this and expand upon. This is a raw first draft reading presentation for you. So those of you that aren't up to speed, that's understandable. And um, I am uh, you know, here to help. We are here to help. And we've put measures and um, outlets in place 
for us to focus on uh, on all of this the topics contained within this presentation the service of mikhail mikhail michael is continued in scholasticism rudolf steiner's experiences in connection with the cisterian order founding of a fast spread school of michael in the super sensible worlds at the time when in the age of the spiritual soul materialism took its start on earth two of my favorite characters within the bible are archangel michael and archangel gabriel let that be said they both are only uh, featured when there is some business serious business to be done a twilight mood pervades the platonism of the school of charters while from the super sensible school of michael are born the impulses for the spiritual life of the future these impulses work into the anthroposophical movement of the present time the figure of julian the apostate the individuality of julian julian the apostate the demonic idols of bacon of verulam a super sensible cult at the turn of the 18th and 19th century which flows down in real imaginations of a spiritual kind inspiration proceeding from the individuality of julian the apostate the end of the century the importance of a knowledge of karma for understanding the general evolution of spiritual life the stars are colonies of spiritual beings it seemingly is written and understood um, when we look at history and the um, the divinity, the connection to the stars, the celestial objects, the uh, the use of them, the recognition of them, astronomy, astrology, pyramids, Greco, um, Mayan, Incan, Aztec, it's very relevant. These were prevalent and it's relevant to mention, but somewhat lost in today's uh, civilization time um, at this moment. To understand karma, we must discover spirituality, the paths of man between death and the new birth in connection with the beginnings of the stars. You would reference um, JC in order to be reborn. He first had to die in order for any of us to be reborn. We have to go through a process, uh, the attainment of higher knowledge um, and, uh, and uh, the, uh, the opening of the mind going to the temple. Difficulties for the man of modern time in approaching a real wisdom of the stars the rulership of michael opens the way for spiritual investigation of man's path between death and a new birth and the forming of his karma intensity of the experiences in the life after death the figure of strada the battle of the minstrels in the wartburg heinrich von ofterdingen for examples of the few individualities whose successive earthly lives, if described one after, after the other at the same time, give descriptions of history. A Roman philosopher belonging to the school of the skeptics at the end of the first Christian century, Cardinal Mazzarini Hertling, Gregory the Great, Ernest Haeckel, the Council of Nicaea, the Hermit, the Nun of Vladimir, Solivov. Welcome to SPL's Christian Disclosure. Let me just check the settings because uh, it's just my phone's just booted me out of the stream. The knowledge ye are, ye are all about to learn shall end the established order of things and new orders shall begin. SPLS pro got faith we don't need bibles do not take the archangel michael here this recital is quite vital you shall all hold the correct equitable title we get high on the opposite of night of and the foundations that i'm going to talk about are dark and negative due process of law is a metaphysical cover phrase for legal concepts such as corporations which are property rights these corpses are supernatural entities which do not have a verifiable existence except to the eyes of a particular faith or belief system. Rules of law, that's an oxymoronic statement, there are rules and there are law, but as it is, rules of law which reference these legal concepts are theorems. Jurisprudence is a special branch of the science of transcendental nonsense. What? A cult referred from the cabal 
courts or religious temples of such cults. So you see how spirituality, um, crucifixion, daily self-crucifixion, taking the Father's name in vain, there's a lot of different uh, external areas that we've, um, through our discoveries, been able to bring in so they are all relevant in their um, correct places. This presentation has been cobbled together in less than an hour and a half, and um, it should follow on and flow as, um, as it is intended. If it doesn't, I shall make amendments and then reorganize this, and then it will be presented to you as a PDF from our foundation, educational, you know, private trust that we have here. Foundations of Law, L-O-R-E and L-A-W, as follows. The Judean Judeo-Christian Bible tells a wonderful story. It is, in fact, often referred to as the greatest story ever told. And so it is. You are now about to find out why. In the New Testament of the Christian Bible, a provocative and most serious challenge is laid on the whole of Christianity. Since it bears directly on our subject, we will quote it. If Christ not be risen, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is also in vain, and we are found false witnesses of God. And if Christ not be raised, your faith is in vain, ye are yet in your sins. 1 Corinthians 15, 14, 15 and 17. In the New Testament, there is a warning given to all who would build a house. Namely, before you lay the foundation, find out what the foundation itself will rest on, solid rock or sand. The reason is obvious, or said another way, you need to stand under the foundation to get a true understanding. So what we are doing here is standing under the foundation before we attempt to look at, consider building a house, what type of house, um, you know, we are housed in a, in a vessel, um, a soul, a consciousness, you know, a spirit, uh, etc. There are very various forms of houses and um, your foundations, what you, your belief systems are on, may or may not be based on true uh, facts, or they may be based on a belief. And so when we talk of foundations, let us closely examine the original conceptual foundations of the faith, and then decide if Christ not be risen. And in order to do that, we must go back not 2000 years to the birth of Christ, the alleged birth of Christ, which I view as an event, Perhaps it was justice that died on the cross, not so much Jesus. But we must go back eight to 10,000 years, perhaps 16,000 years, um, Gebekli Tepe, uh, and furthermore, to the birth of modern man. For when one seeks to establish foundations, one must begin at the beginning. Remember, when Jesus spoke the truth to his accusers, he would justify himself by quoting law. Firstly, he would quote God's law. And then after quoting God's law, he would often quote the accuser's law and use that against them as well. Um, it is written in one of the Encyclopedia Britannicas that legal is the undoing of God's law. I haven't exactly found that exact Britannica and the reference within that, but I believe that's where that statement comes from. For example, Jesus would say, did ye never read in the scriptures and then quote God's law? Do you see? Discovery has shown us the bridge between the linguistic codes, the codex, the phonics, the subtext, the text written in the Bible and what is written in the London Templar legal code. It is never crossed while educating the masses or indoctrinating the masses. In England, in Britain, church and state are indeed one and cannot be separated. Unlike in America, where you have the separation of that in, in well, America, the USA incorporated. For the authority of all law is based on God's authority ceded to woman, man, man, human. Indeed, if this relationship was ever discovered, all good men would turn away from the fiction and choose to be free under God's law and no longer be enslaved by man's legal personality, persona, fiction, titles, claiming the wrong title, because that's where it's vital that you hear this recital, exactly as the Bible instructs us to allegedly escape and no slaves would be left to run the machine of mammon money moon eye we are well on the way to cracking this code and so i want to share with you what i've uncovered what we as a family as a consciousness have uncovered so far 
whatever your opinion or beliefs about religion and the Bible are, they do not apply here. I'm not interested in proving the existence of anything, but what exists in nature that can be proven. The nature of God or lack thereof is for you to decide as individuals. And that has absolutely no relevance within this discussion. The words we will be defining here are straight out of the Bible and the legal dictionaries of government. Those legal dictionaries and the styles used is generally legalese and they are found with their meanings, implied definitions in Black's Law Dictionary. We speak common mother's tongue, plain and simple English, and you can look at my words, interpretation, meanings and definition from the Oxford English Dictionary. When you comprehend that these things are one and the same and that the Bible is the hidden authority of the laws of men in government and religion. So we say that the London Templars uh, legal system is basically based on this bibliotech. You will then start to have your own revelation that I cannot imagine one, you know, as for one to be able to put into words. Now, the word abandoned, for instance, may be defined as two seemingly opposite concepts. Abandoned on one hand means totally free and unhindered expression of will, while in the same definition, it may also mean to leave something behind. For the purposes, we must certainly combine these definitions in our comprehension that in order to be free and unhindered in our lives as free humans, as man, in abandon under God, under the laws of nature, we must also abandon and leave behind permanently the ties, the tithes, the proper ties, the property that binds us in chains of debt, sureties and obligation to government, mammon. In other words, we must abandon our person or perhaps look for alternative provisions because uh, we have the rights to choose to or not to be a person in front of the law, at law, um, God being no respecter of persons. So we must look to manage, uh, correct, amend the relationship we have um, viewed as persons so as to 100% of the time um, be viewed uh, execute deeds as living beings, authentic, sovereign, suveran beings. A man that carries a commercial entity in the form of an artificial person in commerce with government, mammon, in truth, carries around a demon, it could be viewed, and therefore cannot live life in abandon. Webster's 1828 dictionary defines the word demon as signifying an evil spirit or genius which influences the conduct or directs the fortunes of mankind. Chin chin. And just what exactly is an evil genius? Genie, genius, Latin from the root gizno, to beget. Among the ancients, a good or evil spirit or demon supposed to preside over man or over a man's destiny in life that is to direct his birth and actions and be his guard and guide. A tutelary deity, the ruling and protecting power of men, places or things, things, a name, a name in English, linguistic Oxford styles, yes, is, uh, is denoted by starting with a capital letter and denotes an object or a thing. Nom, nombre, hombre, names. This seems to be merely a personification of the particular structure or bent of mind or meant which a man receives from nature, which is the primary signification of the word. The peculiar structure of mind or meant which is given by nature to an individual or that disposition or bent of mind which is peculiar to every man and which qualifies him for a particular employment, a particular natural talent or aptitude of mind for a particular study or course of life as a genius for history, for poetry or painting, strength of mind, uncommon powers of intellect, particularly the power of invention. In this sense, we say Homer was a man of genius, hence a man endowed with uncommon vigor of mind, a man of superior intellectual faculties. Shakespeare was a rare genius, it is said, Webster's 1828. An evil genius demon might be one who, let's say, creates a doctrine of Christian religion that goes completely against the teachings of the character of Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ. 
the demiurge, the Holy Father, uh, incorporates that doctrine into a corporate church and then deceives all the followers of that religion that its word is not only of and inspired by God, but that his genius is the only true interpretation of the will of God as God's spokesman and author. And later on in this presentation, I will go through the creation of the crown, the papacy, the lead and bull of the Romanus Pontifex, and allegedly the man in the Vaticano that presents himself as the king of kings in the um, incorporation of the uh, Christian and Catholic churches there, kingdoms and um, crown princes, the crown themselves, okay? And thus, one of a thousand religions is born, completely hiding the fact that religion ceremony symbols and mammon is forbidden in the bible for true followers of the legal and spiritual story of christ jesus and its guidance to be free from the influences and enslavement of the church and state there are references within the scriptures warnings lest ye be deceived and many will come in my name and pretend to be i and rest assured here that a demon genius needs no wings or horns or claws you know, red man, beast, bull, horned one, as depicted in ancient artifacts. We reference the devil being in the details, the small print, you know, the terms and conditions of these agreements, or <coughs> contracts, which are agreements. These are just frightening imagery to scare children and adults, uh, man consciousness into never perceiving that ordinary conscious souls beings like themselves like you and i like the scribes like the initiates in spls pro like my scribes on indiglo like the ones that are doing the good work right here and now trying and attempting to spread the truth in the face of adversity and um, going against community guidelines and taking hits for it they live among us controlling us feeding off our collective ignorance harvesting our wealth and happiness and they are just as human as you and me. They are as we are, simply of Adam, perhaps Adam in Hebrew, man, primarily the name of the human species. We also look at Abraham um, and certain things, Sarah and Abraham, but we'll leave that aside. Just bear with me. Mankind, appropriately, the first man, the progenitor of the human race. The word signifies form, shape or subtle form, or suitable form. Hence, species, it is evidently connected with H-E-B, Heb, to be like or equal, to form an image, to assimilate. When the senses of likeness, image, form or shape a body like Sea Man, Webster's 1828, as we can read here, and within the Bible coordinates, the word Adam is plural and it is representative of all mankind as a species. But more importantly, it represents within the Bible the status of mankind before being enslaved by diminishing legal statuses, names such as person, British, UK citizen, American citizen, debtor or slave. Yet what does your priest sell to you every Sunday, hoping you never learn the true language of the Bible, of the state of the as kings, that Adam should be anthro, anthro porphomized as a single man i do not claim to be a genius and would avoid any demon that claims such notion for him or for herself for that is just a false title not of nature i have no religion to sell you my initiates of self and law and i want none of your money or your pledged oath in exchange for the sharing and our continued sharings of works and christian disclosures and the discoveries that we make we accept donations for those that would like to give and we require nothing of nobody we give it freely in the hopes of breaking away the supposed mystery of the bible and revealing what it truly is to be free and living peace among all men under its teachings you will not need to pay um, two thousand pound for uh, information to claim your sovereignty. You will not need to pay 5,000 pounds thereabouts or 10,000 pounds for creations of trust. We do not sell trusts. We teach you the information for you to be able to use and express and correct titles, relationships and trusts yourself, um, title, property correction, and uh, for you to be able to express trust and help get uh, property um, assets, uh, belongings held on trust for yourself. 
for all womb men must know these words or be permanently stuck in their already existing bond bondage to the religion of church and state ultimately church and state are seemingly the same thing where nowadays one is incorporated with the other laughably calling themselves non-profits not for profit how prophetic perhaps non-profits would be more like in short i want you to help i want to help you to save you from your fictional selves i want you to consider and stop taking part in your own demonic possession of an artificial person people remember the popular axiom that possession is nine tenths of the law well, this really means that the law is worthless unless you possess and appear by name as the person belonging to government, recognised by government, the legal fiction that the government's fictional laws only apply to. You see, the laws of men, you see, the laws of men do not apply to you unless you claim and possess man's fictional demon citizen. We call them manuscripted, uh, you know, uh, laws there, not L-O-R-E. Um, L-A-W, codified, uh, secular, as your person. Nine tenths of man's law, in other words, is only applicable to the government's own recognisable property, crown, estate, copyright property. Man has seemingly become insensitive and self-interested to the point of selflessness and not selfness, selflessness to a point that we neglect our children and treat them, uh, forgive me, procreations, and treat them as if they are stray dogs due to a lack of money, credits, food, and water. And in some countries at present, that is true. Right now, we are looking at devastation caused by natural disasters, uh, such as weathers in, the weather's inability to maintain a constant seasonal climate. We've had the coldest May here on Anglo terra firma since 1959. That is undoubtedly affecting plants' productivity and insects' lives' habitats. If this continues as is and is left unchecked and unbalanced, it will no doubt decrease mankind's population substantially. Argumentatively, the world, the sun, the solar grand minimum and uh, the, uh, the, the, the cycles, the cyclical cycles of the realm, the universe, the solar system may just go through transient cycles and there may not be anything to worry about at all so that's a little bit of an old post but it needs a little bit of consideration and it's food for thought it's nothing uh, set in stone 50 50 leading to global global mass disorder to take place what then will be the value of our offspring and procreations how will, will humankind keep productivity it looks like it's now a time of the survival of the fittest as we become so desperate and further desensitized. Humankind's present behaviors and actions that are presently being displayed show how insensitive some of us already have become over the last 24 months. Thousands of our procreations offspring are dying every day. Why? Due to hunger and lack of basic essential rights, that being food, water and shelter, these are, at the very basic level, universal and fundamental, inalienable, unalienable human rights. Left unbalanced and unchecked, we are heading to a complete collapse. That is why SPLSPro.com is intervening, as you see us do, not for secure party creditor and treasury direct account access. Each one of our problems that we come across are one in a million of the same horrific problems that have encompassed mankind. Your town, county, city and or state is one of countless others in the same boat. The boats, ships, ships, hips, hip, ship are being sunk legally and non-lawfully. Legal is the undoing of God's law, man's lawful existence and solace has and continues to be legally invaded by the devil's armies man's one true currency is trust my word your word is our bond children assets procreations our our, our diamonds our gold our uh, reserves our um, valuable assets man's one true tr treasure then is our procreations offspring they are man's diamonds that shine bright but they soon burn out and are beginning to fade away whilst we stand aside and look. 
We see that families are under a tremendous pressure financially and legally, and as such, man has been unwittingly used as legal securitization, sureties for the corporations and nation's debts. The devil is now ready and waiting for his final turn of that screw. SPLSPro.com is looking for alphas and omegas and its initiates of self, aka the conscionable chosen ones, not chosen by SPLs, but chosen by actions of oneself and the syncretism and synchronicity, the synchronization, the chronos of the immutable, universal and divine quantum flux fields of coincidental daily interaction. Actions do indeed speak louder than words in this respect. Equity is not one's chosen path. Equity chooses ye. Once it trusts you, trust and equity, equity and trust go hand in hand like truth and lies. With the above said, we private self-governing, self-aware, conscionable, conscionable initiates of self and law. I, self, law, am master, have now, and the new ones among us, ye are being retrained, reconditioned and reconnected. We give the important knowledge, the necessary pre <laughs> necessary prerequisites, you wascally wabbit, prerequisites and skills to enable ye to start on this family mission. And our universal intention is to assist with the reversing of the above vision and direction of humankind that it is seemingly headed into recourse of the ship, so to speak. We all, once initiated, shall help to lead the world unto a new vision, new ideas, and a new technological advancement that shall benefit the earth, our families, procreations, the plant and animal kingdoms that we seem to be simultaneously slaughtering as well as our, ourselves. All that join and support our universal, lawful and Abrahamic trust shall eventually become dignitaries, witnesses of the Holy Father, Christ Jesus, Allah, Muhammad, PBUH, etc. Lion in Zion. It's open to all families. That's just a brief descriptor of the three major Abrahamic trusts in Christian nations and the others uh, that are non uh, affiliated with are also included and welcome to join, which is why I've gone on to Rastafari, Zion, um, you know, Hinduism, Sikhism, Buddhism, um, and all of the others, uh, universal non sectarian remedies. It shall be you that then changes the way this global society lawfully then in it or interacts the world shall have a legion of supremely excellent and well-versed unified consciousnesses ye shall be trained and aware and knowledgeable in how to be able to hold gifted practices in the ways we shall then live hence my statement of spl's universal and non-sectarian remedy for all races religions colors and creeds whereby we humankind mankind consciousness claim the world's resources our common heritage again we shall spread charity honesty goodwill over all this looks like our only hope as our elected so-called leaders kings and queens they all hold bibles whilst allowing war, warship and death to legally occur on a regular basis, whilst claiming to have divine rights, religious accords and covenants. SPLs believes in you all. Now it is time for you to believe in yourself, in thyself, know thyself. None but yourself can free your mind from mental slavery. We can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh, Lord, <laughs> a bit of Phil Collins for dads and mums out there. Imagine a world filled with millions of humans with a Christ-like, Muhammad-like, Buddha-like, Taoism, consciousness, or even Chico Xavier's, Nelson Mandela, Mother Teresa, John Lennon, Marcus Garvey, and Martin Luther King's, Malcolm X's, etc., to name a few. It is nigh on time we started to practice what has been preached in the many and various manuscripts of the script is how and when I hear the readers of my words ask internally, pray tell the message, O sage of the ages, governor, lay it on us. Well, you do not need much to change, only willpower and love. <clears throat> if you do not believe in this, then you cannot help us, and ye are destined for the laughter or slaughter. Slaughter is just laughter with an S in front of it. As you stand aside and look, 
walk on by unto thy fate. May God bless ye. Mother Nature's natural resources are vital to keep harmony in this universe. As discord is upon us all, time to claim our and our unborn lineage birthrights, unalienable rights, yes, claim of rights, no more fights until the light we go. Ye are here and reading or listening to this for a particularly good reason. There are no coincidences, coincide answers. It was written that Jesus will return to lead the masses and change, man and change mankind's future for the better. Ask yourself, is that a realistic and moral option? Man has created many of these problems, most of these problems, 99.9% .9 of these problems. And so therefore, ergo, man shall be the only ones to fix them. The Holy Church expected the return of the Son of God, the prodigal saviour, to return on the 6th of June, 1666, and for him to change the future for the better. Well, he did not. An infamous act was enacted instead as the Holy Church, the papacy, the papacy, the sea of paper, the paparazzia, the sea of paper rats, decided that they shall continue to rule with the divine right of kingship and lordship. Set a K and set a KV of 1666 was enacted, one of three said acts. You'll hear about this later on in the presentation. Stay with me, keep the flow, hold the saturation points, have faith, uh, and even if you're taking it in parts, remember to notice the time to note the time where you exit and then pick back up on the time, you know, where you was last here. Ye are uh, all now and now to become fully entrusted. Arise, our lions of love and light. The way out of this ungodly worship has been located. Someone has to make sure mankind and nature are survive. I, David Yarson of the Jeremita estate, family and clan. I'm no king or leader. I am simply here to assist in this as the Holy Father and universal Christ consciousness has instructed me to do so. I shall be obedient and serve only this lawful cause. Now you see why I, Kevin, our admins, SPLS Pro carry out deeds as I and we do, as um, our private trust does for the greater good not for our own selfish gains. By doing this work, we shall all indeed profit and benefit. What does it profit a man whom gains the whole world? Read and listen to the above again slowly, and then that question is truly answered. We offer only guidance. You are to walk your own path. And remember, initiates, without a journey, there can be no destination. We enter into the kingdom of heaven. Remember when Jesus spoke the truth to his accusers? Well, here we go. Message for all legal persons. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrongs which he has done, and there is no respect, to, respect of persons. Now listen up and listen good, my sovereign and sovereign souls. Legal maxim, no one is above the law. Legal maxim, commerce by the law of nations ought to be common and not to be converted into a monopoly and the private gain of a few. In commerce, truth is sovereign. Exodus 20, 16, thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. I think that's Psalms 1172, for his merciful kindness is great toward us and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Matthew 6, 3, 3, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. John 8, 17, it is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. So uh, in the legal London Templar system, two testimony witnesses in a high court for uh, evidential purposes mean that two witnesses make a fact. When we say the legal system is based upon the Bible, we have evidenced this time and time again, and we continue to do so. Uh, it is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. John 8, 32, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. John 8, 36, if the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. 
Ephesians 8.25, wherefore putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. 26, be, be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Annexed year, 10 biblical maxims of equity, Bible KJV 1611. The Council of Hippo, AD 393, and the Council of Carthage, AD 397, also affirmed the same, the same 27 books as authoritative. The councils followed something similar to the following principles to determine whether a New Testament book was truly inspired by the Holy Spirit. Was the author an apostle or have a close connection with an apostle? Biblical canons, canon law, canonization of the Bible, biblical canon. A biblical canon or canon of scripture is a set of texts or books which particular religious community regards as authoritative scripture. Now, there are Tibetan canons as well. I have released and brought to you um, amongst one of the first consciousnesses, not the first, um, Rudolf Steiner, Neville Goddard, Helena Blavatsky, well before me, um, Tibetan Buddhism and Tibetan canons as referenced by Rudolf um, on um, Madame Helena Blavatsky. Canons, canons were ex in existence prior, prior to what we're talking about here. Um, do unto others as you want done unto yourself. Love thy neighbor, coming from the philosopher from far east Asia, known as Confucius. I rest my case. The English word canon comes from the Greek, I wish I could say that, but I can't, meaning rule or measuring stick. Christi Christians became the first to use the term in reference to scripture, but Eugene Ulrich regards the notion as Jewish. Development of the Christian biblical canon, the first council that accepted the present canon, the canon of Trent, was the Council of Rome, held by Pope Damascus I in 382. A second council was held at the Synod of Hippo, 393, reaffirming the previous council list. A brief summary of the Acts was read and accepted by the Council of Carthage, 397, and the Council of Carthage, 419. The canonization of the Bible. The canonization of the Bible is part of a series, The Origin of the Bible, which explains canonization. Now, boats use cannons for defensive measures as well. A cannon is a weapon, um, could be, can be interpreted as um, Santos Bonacci, Jordan Maxwell, to name a few of the areas of discovery that have led up to this point for our Christian disclosure and discovery. The process by which the Bible was accepted as the canon, both Old and New Testament, the Chalcedon Council merely affirmed what had already been clearly established in 451 AD. Canonization of the Bible and what we should be reading. Now we look at the King James 1611 authorized Bible and Apocrypha. If you want a Bible equipped with many of the Apocrypha's books and the Old and New Testament books, a King James 1611 Bible is perfect. That one um, followed on from the 1599 Geneva Bible. That's what the King James Bible replaced. So also have a look at the uh, 1599 Geneva Bible. The 1611 Bible is perfect. It has 14 Apocrypha books that were originally a part of the King James Bible. Um, also check out the Ethiopian Bible in your discovery and research as well. How we got our Bible. Christian history, 397, Council of Carthage, establishes Orthodox New Testament, Canon, 27 books, circa 400, Jerome translates the Bible into Latin. This Vulgate becomes the standard of the medieval church. To use a legal name is legal fraud explained. The trick is to distinguish within the Bible when the law is of nature and God and when it is of man acting as God and vicar. Many or most of the mentions of God and Lord in the Bible referred to the kings who claim to rule as God on earth in Christ's departure until his return. The Bible switches between capitalized God and little God, Lord and Lord. Um, split titles are referenced here to accept, reserve, or exempt. 
as where a statute saves vested rights to toll, poll, or suspend the running or operation of, as to save the statute of limitations, not to be saved is to stop acting or impersonating something else that is not under God in nature. Note, not start that again. Note, to be saved is to stop acting or impersonating something else that is not under God in nature. To cease to be an artificial person is saving yourself and acting under the uh, under God, the creator, the Holy Father, the one consciousness and un, in nature again, becoming a true believer uh, of sorts. Uh, Christian religion will tell you that you can be saved and still be a citizen fiction person. Religion seeks to control you through fiction under the doctrine of law of the land. Government is religion. This doctrine is contrary to the nature of life itself. A person is not natural. Thus, by default, is contrary to God. Either save yourself under God or remain a debtor person subject to man. Again, you cannot serve two masters. You must choose between the creator, the most high, God and mammon. To be born again is to quit using the artificial person or to quit being known. See, I told you it's subject to edits. They are a lot of posts um, brought together as one presentation across the uh, lineage of, of our existence since our founding in 2015. Okay. So to be born again is to, is to quit using or quit being uh, referenced and known and identified as an artificial person and um, perhaps seek uh, alternative provisions and be reborn unto this life on earth. That, that's all. You know, a person is civilly dead as um, a child. You are civilly dead and inactive. You know, uh, we need to look at how we become civilly inactive, civilly dead and inactive, no longer a volunteer. We shall look to move into equitable realms and we are a long way from where Broseph John of the Harris family left us. To avoid being injured, brought into man's fictional realm, we must consider how we now manage our fictional person to ensure arbitration from that realm. The legal realm can only exist within man's realm. Without God, there be no man. Without man, there'll be no fiction of man. This is a legal concept and it requires not your belief in any doctrine. Abjuration. Abjuration is the solemn repudiation, abandonment or renunciation by or upon oath often the renunciation of citizenship or some other right or privilege. The term comes from the Latin abjura, to forswear. It is also interesting to know that when you look up the word birth in the Dictionary of Law, 1889, it tells you to see abandon. The word abandon in section two is defined by a Dictionary of Law, 1889, using these exact words. The act of a parent in exposing an infant of tender years, usually under seven in any place with intent wholly to desert it. Based on the definition in the previous paragraph, when one's mother gave life to us and born us, aka gave birth to us, and our parents signed the birth certificate with our uh, legal name, names upon it, calling the name, they unknowingly agreed to abandon you. There is a there is an, a, an exchange unbeknown to mum, mum and dad, um, title rights, uh, an event is happening. And at that event, you know, man cannot be registered um, at all, but the citizenship is created. There is a second coming. This allows the state to claim one, the titles as its property and ship, citizenship, you to the land of the legally dead, legal fictions, estate, personas. Watch my video entitled Birth, B-I-R-T-H, birth b-e-r-t-h and stillbirth it is entitled inclusio unis est exclusio alterius the commercial maxims of law the substance of law trumps the letter of the law in so as the color of law abides by the letter of the law of the code and statute whereby with the spirit of the law is by the substance of law in which if there were no harm, there is no claim, corpus delecti. 
the commercial maxims for many people, it might come as a surprise, in many cases, a pleasant one. If they were informed that essentially all of the law of the world is founded on, derived from, and is a function of 10 simple, essential, and fundamental commercial maxims. This is a topic you will have heard us mention and talk about over the last six years since um, we was established and founded in 2015. Okay, so we cannot repeat this enough. Let me go again. The commercial maxims for many people, it might come as a surprise. In many cases, we find it's a pleasant one. If you was informed and knowledgeable that essentially all of the law of the world is founded upon, derived from, and is a function of 10 simple, essential, and fundamental commercial maxims. There are seven basic ones, plus three corollaries. These foundation principles, axioms, underlie all of man's law. Notwithstanding, we're not here all, but there are the there is the, the side of equity that needs adding to that, and the principles of equity. One of my favourites being where the rules of common law and those of equity uh, collide. Those of equity shall prevail. So we need to obviously recognise that that is true for public, commercial, legal, UK, uh, American, Commonwealth, foreign territory, central bank, uh, public side, um, civil, uh, arbitrary correct but private remedy and private um what we've come to teach since um late on 2016 early 2017 with the triangle set law grantor beneficiary trustee and the expression of the correct titles title rights legal title possessory title equitable title and uh, these kind of areas needs adding in there are we still good are we still rolling one hour in, let's say hello to Lindsay, Kira, Louise, and Michael. I can't see many comments there. Bless up and thank you for joining today. Feel free to share. Put it in places where you may find others benefit from this. And I shall continue on. An hour in, page eight of 28. So we're a third of the way through for those that are finding it. Uh, you know, intense. <laughs> Although the dazzling complexity and ever-changing forms, parameters and labels obfuscate this fact, the essence of the matter remains intact. The commercial maxims constitute the basic rules involved in preventing and resolving disputes, including relating in life and commercial affairs as if disputes might arise and written proof of one's position in time and content must be securely established. Although commerce is usually thought of as buying, selling and trading, all of man's interactions with his fellow man are considered as being commerce, commercial intercourse. Commerce encompasses all relationships between people. Black's Law Dictionary, 5th edition, for instance, defines commerce as follows. Commerce, the exchange of goods, productions or property of any kind, the buying, selling, and exchanges of artic articles. Intercourse by way of trade and traffic between different peoples or states, including not only the purchase, sale, and exchange of commodities, but also the instrumentalities and agencies by which it is promoted and the means and appliances by which it is carried on and transportation of persons as well as goods by both land and sea. Also, interchange of ideas sentiments etc as between man and man page 244 the commercial maxims codify the fundamental principles maxims of law and commerce upon which man's law and governments have operated on this plan et for at least the past four to six thousand years and I say there's a 16,000 year and possibly 18, 20,000 year lineage since the, um, since the beginning of civilization. That's what we reference there. We go into various uh, antiquities, areas, uh, annals of history, and we find this to be true. Sumerian clay tablets reference that, uh, for instance, if you're wondering, and prior to that as well, not just in the uh, cuneiform and in Sanskrit and uh, other such languages and civilizations and time periods. 
they constitute as it were the rules of the game part of the grief of mankind today is that the vast overwhelming percentage of the populace does not know the basic rules of the game they are playing and hence are incapable of playing it and will always lose um, when you go to a court um, you play a game on a court such as tennis or basketball okay when you go to court you're playing a game on a court if one who does not know the rules of a game is playing that game, which others who are masters of the rules, you know, then the outcome is a foregone conclusion. The one who knows the rules wins the game, while the one who does not know the rule necessarily, ordinarily loses, typically will lose. Such is the state of the world, elucidating the underlying fundamental rules so that no one understands what is going on greatly helps in levelling the playing field. The rules, therefore, are set forth below with the understanding that they operate within the context and settling of the universal underlying principles. The commercial maxims are the most basic, enduring and minimalistic codification of universal real law extant on Earth. They are very simple, largely self-evident and based on common sense. The Jews, for instance, have studied, analysed, practised and redefined commercial law founded on these maxims for thousands of years. This continuous, relentless, single-minded absorption in the law over millennia has worked the bugs out. Every angle, facet, ramification, application and nuance of practice of the commercial law has been seasoned over time and is deeply and thoroughly known by those who own, run and rule the world. Indeed, the aristocracy, the elite, the ones that claim to have divine rights of king, kingship, the crown, the crown estate, the monarchy, the establishment, the institutions are precisely where they are because they do know these fundamental laws, because it is real that it must work, always works, and it's impossible for it not to work since it's grounded in natural law. The esoteric truth must be obscured and concealed from the masses by every means possible. We look at esoteric and exoteric truths as, as well as mostly the es esoteric that we mentioned, that is mentioned. If the so-called rulers of the world did not withhold from the, from the masses the general understanding, the knowledge that the foundational principles of real law are few in number and easily mastered by everybody and that all of the documents and instruments used in all law and commerce are likewise few in number and comprehensible to laymen such con men would have to abandon their aristocratic titles of nobility and find real jobs based on genuine productivity contribution and win-win interactions with their fellow man So, let's breathe a minute. I'm now going to bring something to you which will be American referencing, but it is relevant with what we've found and seen in England to do with the courts and um, the laws that are operating, the various areas of laws, the uh, LAWS, man-made codified laws such as maritime, admiralty, ecclesiastical, ecclesia, canons, uniform commercial codes. There is um, a lot of work being done by here, by us here on Anglo territory, on um, the sovereign Republic of New Brighton is where I am. And, uh, you know, we're English side of things to our friends across the pond, to America, to New Zealand, to the Commonwealth and foreign territories. We've um, been looking for a great many years of what has been presented from America. We would look into the commonalities of the judicial system, where the judicial system was formed. Um, generally, England, London, Templar, Knights, BAR, um, barristers, uh, international barristers, lawyers. Um, we would look at the commonalities and what underpins all of this money, religion, language, legalese, crown copyright, barristers, solicitors, ecclesia, maritime, admiralty, charges, penal codes, and things like this. So when I speak of this, this was given to me by um, somebody in the Anon network some quite some time ago, and this is focused on America. 
but with the uh, recognition that we have with the um, Securities Exchange Commission, the Bank of International Settlements uh, and various other um, things in history and in, with institutions and commonalities um, who founded the Americas, uh, which then later turned out to be the United States of America. We look at Cook and Columbus, okay? We look at the lineages, we look at the crowns, we look at the monarchy, we look at a lot. So just bear that in mind. This is not legal advice, I'll reiterate. This was something that was given to me quite some time ago, helped open my eyes into the uniform interaction of the judicial systems. And this was from the Anon Network in America. Um, and, and I want to present it to you simply for contemplation and consideration. It will need amendments to it, but um, Yusuf L is one of the um, only mans that I've heard articulately talk about this on high frequency radio. And what I've done with my diligence and research, what we've done, what you've done, what we've done together, has helped um, confirm or deny what is about to be given to you here. So this is American, all right, but it's relevant. And we have our own way of uh, accepting, conditionally accepting and discharging and charging, looking at bills of exchange, international bills of exchange, Geneva, international monetary systems, charges, um, courts, languages, uh, attorneys, district attorneys, um, plaintiffs, claimants, defendants, uh, and the processes uh, of the court system, and um, the tierages of the court system, and the dual streams of law that run um, simultaneously, parallel, side by side. So with that disclaimer said, I'm going to carry on. In order to win at court, you have to consider redeeming the bond. Auto Crisp, Cusip, Delta Tango, Charlie Charlie, DTCC, as it seemingly is all about bonds. What the courts are doing, or seemingly doing in these courts, looks to be about bonds, bondage, surety, charges, certificates. When you possibly consider to go into a courtroom, after you've been arrested, you've got no choice, you're remanded in custody and dragged up by force, they may perhaps use two different sets of bonds. They may fill out a bid bond. The United States District Court uses allegedly 273, 274 and 275 SF standard forms. Standard form 273, standard form 274 and standard form 275. This is the United States District Court. So we have been told, again, open for conjecture, interpretation, not set in stone, not legal advice, consideration and food for thought. Several um, years old, this information, and I've just brought it out for consideration. There is seemingly another set of bonds and they are all put out by GSA, General Services Administration. GSA form SF24 is, is allegedly the bid bond. Everyone should try to at least have a copy of the bid bond. The performance bond is SF25. The payment bond is SF25A and put out by the GSA. So we've also talked about birth certificates, certificates of birth, the clerk having bonds open, the SESTA KV uh, trust and certain things like this within England and America. OK, so that needs to be put out right there as well. There is a correlation between um, the two different um, land masses and jurisprudences and how they operate. What's seemingly going on in the courtroom is that they are suing you for a debt collection. We look at debtor and creditor parties. We are not the defendant. We are a party. We present as a party, you know, so we do things differently. And we've uh, evolved somewhat since this was initially given to me. But we'll continue on. If you look at these bonds, every one of these bonds, the bid bond, the performance bond and the payment bond, search those words. That will help you understand, understand and overstand what possibly could be going on. They all seem to have a penal sum attached to them. The reason for the penal sum is if you don't pay back the charges or debt, you will go into default judgment or we look at summary judgment as well as default judgment. 
This is what's going seemingly going on in the courtroom. That is why all are sitting in prison wondering what's going on. If you go in and argue jurisdiction or refuse to answer questions that the banker, bench, judge, arbiter, or the court addresses to you, they will most likely find you in contempt of the court and they will issue a summary judgment or default judgment. You need to know how to do business correctly, and which is what we've learned to do. What they do is they arrest you, they hold you, charge you basically until the suit has been completed. Once they get default judgment on the legal person because of your failure to discharge the charges or as it was previously said, pay the debt, they will then put you in prison. The district attorneys are there to create a smoke screen. What attorneys at law have been trained to do is lead us into dishonor or default judgment then the court can put you into prison. They shall sell your default judgment. Look at the difference between jail and prison. What they do, what do they sell it to? How do they sell it? Believe it or not, the US District Court looks like they buy all of these state court judgment. I don't know why no one has found this out before. There are about 300 reinsurance companies that buy these bonds. They are all insurance companies. These are the people that are buying these bonds. When you went into default judgment and they cannot buy the bonds unless they are certified by the Secretary of the Treasury. So we also look at the Secretary of State. We look at the Treasury Department in England. You know, we make correlations to America and England and um, we make the necessary comparative adjustments within the language and the setup of the state. So when I say it's applicable to America only, yes, it is, but it helped us do a lot of work and research and discovery with what we was doing over here at the time this was presented to us. What they are seemingly doing with these bonds is they have regulations governing these bonds. There are many thousands of regulations that govern these bonds, instruments, commercial paper, negotiable instruments, anything that has a signature on it is a negotiable instrument under the Uniform Commercial Code, which then is the Lex Mercatorium, it's the mercantile civil law. The reason that they use Lex Mercatorium in the courtroom is because every one of us are merchants or considered merchants at law. And merchants at law is anyone who holds themselves out to be an expert. Because we use commercial paper on a daily basis, commercial paper, um, central bank issued reserve notes, uh, promissory notes, you are considered to be an expert or banker. This is also why they are not telling you what is really going on in the courtroom. You are presumed to know this stuff because you hold yourself out to be an expert by using commercial paper every day. I have another video that I'm going to put in the description and the comments of this video alongside Lex Mercatoria, which is my bills of exchange, promissory notes, bills and notes and explanation of what we're talking about here as well. Every time we put a signature on a piece of paper, we are creating a negotiable instrument. Some are non-negotiable and some are negotiable. Every time you endorse something, you are acting as an accommodation party or an accommodation maker under UCC 3-419. An accommodation party is anyone who loans their signature to, a part, to another party. Reference UCC 3-419. It tells you what an accommodation maker is and what an accommodation party is. We look at UCC one and we section and we look at UCC three section in particular out of all of the uniform commercial codes. One um, is uh, very interesting. I'll leave it there. And three is to do with negotiable instruments and financial instruments and things such as and um, reservation contracts, uh, rights, uh, such things as performance in general. When you loan your signature to them. The signature is also known as the uh, equitable asset. The birth certificate would be known as the equitable instrument. So when you loan a signature to them and you sign with full public commercial liability, they can then rewrite your signature on any document they want. And that's exactly what they're doing, allegedly. When the federal courts are 
what the federal courts are doing is that they are buying up the state court default judgments called criminal cases to cover up what they are doing. Actually, they are more than likely, as we found, civil cases. If you read Clark's praxis, you find that what they call criminal is all civil. They just call it, label it criminal to cover up what they're doing. If you don't discharge the charges or pay the debt, you are more than likely going to be imprisoned, bottom line. Everybody is feeding off the prison system. All of the major corporations are feeding off the prison systems. How many of you have heard of Wright Real Estate Investment Trust? or PZN, Papa Zulu November, which means prison trust. Prisoners are classified, uh, it's looking like, as real estate. They own all of the real estate because they hold the bonds on them. If you haven't redeemed your bond, so they didn't close your account. A contractor comes in, or any corporation could come in and tender a bid bond to the US District Court, for example, and they could perhaps buy up these court judgments. And anytime you issue a bid bond, there has to be a reinsure. So they get a reinsurance company to come in and act as surety for the bid bond. Then they bring in a performance bond. All of these bonds, bid, payment, and performance, are all surety bonds. And anytime you issue a bid bond, it has to have a surety guaranteeing or reinsuring the bid bond via an issuing performance bond. <sighs> yes, I hear what you're saying and um, I'll continue on. Then they get an underwriter and that would be either an investment broker or investment banker. They come in and underwrite the performance bond, which is reinsuring the bid bond. What does the underwriter do with the performance bond? The underwriter takes the three bonds and pulls them and creates what's known as a mortgage backed securities, as mortgage backed securities. When you pull these MBS, they are called bonds and are sold to a company called TBA, which is the Bond Market Association. That is an actual corporation. These converted bonds, now MBS, are investment securities and being sold on the international level. CCA is one of the tickers on the New York Stock Exchange. Others include Charlie Whiskey X-Ray, Charlie Whiskey Delta and Charlie Whiskey Golf. And when it goes to Frankfurt, CWG, when it goes to Berlin, CWD and so on. Remember, everything is commercial. 7.2.11.7 CFR says that all crimes are commercial. If you read that carefully, it says kidnapping, robbery, extortion, murder, etc. are all commercial crimes. Well, when we look into the Bible and other such areas, we find that, um, yes, something different. Thus, you are funding the whole enchilada simply because you got into a default judgment when you went into court and failed to discharge the charges and recognize and redeem possible bonds that may or may not be relevant and present within these uh, venues these business venues when we say courts are venues and they are business venues what i read at the beginning now you're now that ties in with that you see transcendental nonsense this is why people don't win in court, because they don't redeem the bond. You are the principal upon which all money circulates, but you don't want to start arguing with the court about that. They are drafting you for performance. So we have a performance in a court, a schedule of fees you have to perform. There is a performance there you are performing for the court. Uh, we look at performance and who performs and uh, actors and actors perform. It, the etymological root references and the linguistics of this and the expansion of the armies perform at war. You know, uh, I'll just leave it there. So anytime the court asks you to do something, they are drafting you for performance. And if you don't perform, you may get into dishonor by non-acceptance. They are making a formal presentment seemingly under uh, UCC 3-501 of the code so they can charge you and they use the word charge. They use the same commercial words on your indictment, information and complaint. They use the word charge, i.e. the following charges. He has or she has two counts of charges. 
be as gentle as a dove and wise as a serpent. You can't act like an insurgent or belligerent. If you do, they will treat you like one and they will beat you up in this ungodly, unholy war. What you want to consider is to settle the account, discharge the charges, go to full settlement and closure. You're running the account. You're the fiduciary trustee over the account. We need to instruct them and tell them what to do, not take instructions from them. We need to control the court. If we are the principal and the uh, owner of the account, the executive in office, the occupier, the source of credit, the principal, etc., tell them what you want is full settlement and closure of the account. You have to do this from the get-go, um, paperwork and acceptances and certain things, how you conduct your business, how you present or represent representation, how you um, may or may not want to consider doing this. So there are various ways in order to, uh, you know, possibly win at, in a court scenario and discharge charges. We have uh, looked at and told you about conditional acceptances, what a conditional acceptance is, how to uh, keep in honour with clean hands and put the liability and the burden of proof back on the claimant, um, proof of authority, proof of jurisdiction, proof of claim, etc., with the conditional acceptance, you can look at considering to say, I'm more than happy to give you a name if you can show that the charging papers have been put into the court record. I have not seen any papers that show any charges exist. That's a negative avert, averment, averment. What you are doing is rebutting the presumption that they ha have charges against your person. Search for the 12 presumptions of the court. When I mention canons and canon law and so forth, you will find, um, I think, works from Franco Collins and Eucadia and um, possibly Gemstone and other such, uh, but taken, I think, initially from Franco Collins, the uh, 12 presumptions of the court and canon law. They work off presumptions. They don't have to have anything. You must rebut their presumptions. Cut the Roman doctrine of discovery. Roman doctrine of discovery. Some have actually gone to the courts and asked them for a bid bond. They have asked that and they've required that they want, they require the bid bond back. They've asked for full settlement and closure of the account. This has come from America. This isn't come from England, or I, I can't stress this enough, but um, my word is my bond. <laughs> I, they have asked for full settlement and closure of the account. It's our credit money that they are create that they create and the same thing is going on in the banks and with these bonds they monetize and securitize these bonds prime and subprime known also spvs uh, gv gpvs general purpose vehicles special purpose vehicles again i've done video coverages um topics and, and covered these uh, areas um driving licenses um, conveyances uh how this language and articulation from financial to paper to uh, electricity, to water, to boats, to Romans, uh, to doctrines. They ask, you could then possibly ask or consider to take some legal counsel. Um, we've talked about sui juris propria persona in one's proper person. And um, sometimes, you know, you can present a layman, um, layman apostolate and um, present with oneself, or you could look at getting counsel and directing counsel. These are your options, and this isn't legal advice. Food for thought and consideration, each to their own. You could consider asking for legal counsel. The reason when you have, uh, why you have to have an attorney is because the attorney, while in the courtroom, is working on the public side, and you and I, as man, as the principal, as the creditor, are working on the private side, public debtor, private creditor. The court cannot talk to you except through your attorney or correct paperwork and um, <laughs> intricate uh, methods of which you um, compel them in their fiduciary capacity and um, you know uh, let them know through your paperwork. But uh, in simple ways, the court cannot talk to us except through an attorney or through um, status standard and capacity correction, um, which is done primarily through paperwork and holding them to account in their capacities. You will need a mouthpiece, a microphone, 
that is what counsel and attorneys, solicitors and barristers are exclusively a mouthpiece. Everyone on the public side is insolvent and bankrupt. We, man, principal, set law, grantor, are not. This situation is known as a fiction of law. They will not allow you to defeat this fiction of law. Why? In Admiralty Maritime, canon law, everything is what we call colourable, the colour of law. That's colour with a U in it as well. Um, even though it's an American, I've changed that there. It's, uh, it has the appearance of being real, but it is not real. Research the word incorporated, incorporeal and corporeal. Notice in the army, you have a corporal. Yes, these are church words. These are financial words. And these are business words, uh, you know, these are military words. Um, the Reverend Captain knows this, the Reverend Captain of the church. They will appoint legal counsel for you. You then instruct the attorney that you are doing a letter of rogatory, a letter of advice. This is also called an acceptance for honour. And you want an accounting of what the total amount of the bill is post settlement and the closure of this uh, alleged account. You then can consider giving your CUSIP, C-U-S-I-P, and AUTOTIS, A-U-T-O-T-I-S number, and your case number. Here's the wording that, this is, that has been given to me in this post that has allegedly been used. I accept your charges for value and consideration. Value and cons where have we heard that before? Accepted for value, A for V. I accept your charges for value and consideration in return for post-settlement and closure of case number, account number, put down your nine-digit national insurance number or social security number, and put down CUSIP number, your SSN, and AutoCRIS number, your SSN without dashes. Use my exemption for full settlement and closure of this account as this account is prepaid and exempt from levy. Date it and endorse it as the authorised representative. So when we've looked at creditor, debtor, transfer via endorsement, discharge, settlement, servicing the debt, effecting payment, you're going to need to look at the secondary video that I'm going to present in to accompany this. And in addition to Lex Mercatoria, for you to cognize and reference, um, you know, accepting charges for value and consideration. Remember, the application of a signature is also classified as one's valuable consideration. So you may not have heard of CUSIP numbers and auto risk numbers. You may have heard of social security numbers, national insurance numbers. All right. Auto. RIS means Automatic Tracking Identification System. This is the same as SSN NI without the dashes. When I said that they didn't even want to talk to me when you say CUSIP and Auto RIS, they know exactly what you're talking about. CUSIP is the Committee on Uniform Securities Identification Process. Committee on Uniform securities identification process qsip uses a social security number ni so when we talk about the securities exchange commission the bank of international settlements central banks uh, bankruptcy insolvency solvent insolvent uh, solvent glue bonds you see how this is uh, i keep looking at the mic sorry how this is um, dark black um, secret worlds, languages in amongst the crown, the crown estate, the legalese, and other such uh, tierages of possible um, areas which are operating simultaneously with their own relevant jurisdiction. And, you know, uh, mentioning these kind of um, uh, terminologies and areas out loud verbally on the day is not really the way to go. Um, your paperwork being presented articulately correctly and acceptances and management of in paperwork privately is the best way to go. Trying to go to um, a venue, um, a court will say, and trying to verbally express private remedy in a public venue will not really, you know, and also magistrates and uh, judges of sorts are not really knowledgeable. The clerk is running the show, um, the judge is the arbiter, the referee, the banker, OK, the clerk is involved and you've got your claimants and uh, the ones that make the claim, the prosecution, the pro se tours. 
all right, and what that is, and uh, it would, the language on that in itself is amazing. So you would need to consider, um, not that we should, but because we're roped into this, a clean hands, honour, public and private, creditor and debtor, conditional acceptances, and managing this through a process, which is your paperwork preceding you. So the CUSIP, CUSIP is the Com Committee on Uniform Securities Identification Process. CUSIP uses an SSNNI to identify you because the birth certificate is classified as a financial security instrument. And to further demonstrate that, when you look at a bonded instrument of a financial nature, it will generally have a watermark going through it, not to demonstrate authenticity, but to donate the currency, this water, the charges, the electricity, the current of the sea, the charge, the financial recognition of that, the uh, promissory notes in England and the dollar dollar bill your will have um, a watermark going through them that is to donate amongst originality authenticity to donate the charge going through the paper which is the currency money credit fiat uh, current currency legal tender you see where we're going here so the birth certificate if you'd like to get your person's birth certificate and hold it up to the light you will see what within it you will see a watermark mark of current electricity so those that argue oh you're free man's sovereigns and such and such you're uh, you know you're uh, i don't want to swear here but you're tripping off your tits and you're making stuff up and you're all deluded you sovereign citizens another oxymoronic statement there you're either private and sovereign or a public citizen and a person you are not both the rules and the law are separate there is no rules of law OK, so the uh, the financial instrument to identify you because the birth certificate um, and certificates with watermarks through them are notified and denoted by that watermark as being a financial security instrument. Capiche? Make sense? Sits down? Your legal person? The equitable instrument? The certificate? The equitable asset? The signature? Yes, got that right. It is an investment security and they have all of the original birth certificates which are registered at the state level with the Department of Human Resources, then they go to the Department of Commerce and the federal level and then to the DTC, Depository Trust Corporation. So we've pretty much got a handle on this in England and that's not correct for England and we look at the General Registry Office and we look at the Registrar General and the Generals within the Army and the Militia, as I said at the beginning of this uh, uh, interjection this is american given american uh, usa incorporated reference that uh, i've never mentioned before i've had a while and i thought i'd help you out with giving you this for considerations that's simply it so for england and uk we've pretty much you know got this in the bag i continue on Judges and lawyers don't understand commercial law. They do not teach commercial law at law school. They have a special school for them, and it's on a need-to-know, secret, um, cosmic level, Templar, um, degree, Masonic, um, secret club, um, institution, need-to-know basis. The law always assumes that one knows since you were doing this since you were 18 until you, re well, since you were born until you reach the age of majority, the major, you know, the age of majority or of accountability, accountability, accountable for your actions, account, accounts, finance. So at the age of accountability or majority, which is usually 18 or 21 years of age, aka adult hood. Beware of the hoods and um, uh, certain hoods that come with that. If you're holding yourself out and you meet using commercial paper on daily basis, that legal definition, personhood, that legal definition makes you an expert or you wouldn't be using it. So they presume that when you go into the courtroom, you know all this stuff, the 12 presumptions of the court they will need looking at and rebutting, as we've been mentioning for at least six years now. They have to give you an out, a remedy. Otherwise, they're in trouble internationally. Whenever you create a liability, you are, you know, you always have to create a remedy. They're on the public side of the accounting ledger. We are on the private side, David and Jeremita. We are a party. We are not the defendant. 
capiche creditor and debtor you have an account and your account is a demand deposit account and you're insured by the fdia and the fdic the federal depository insurance act which ensures the fdic which is the federal depository insurance corporation under title 12 they have a 10 million dollar policy on you and you're worth more debt than you are alive Again, reference to America only. I know you're getting sick of me saying this, but I'm just thinking of when I premiere this on Tube and I'm getting the ones from Anglo England going, and that's good, and I want that, and I've disclaimed where this is from and who it is for. But if you are worth allegedly more dead than you are alive, we look at present day um, issues at hand now with the pandemic and the Rona and the virus, we just ponder on that a moment, okay? What happened 24 months ago with the government's mismanagement of this health alleged health crisis with the virus and uh, covid just just leave that interjected in there all tradable securities must be assigned a cusip number before it can be offered to investors birth certificates and social security applications are converted into government securities assigned a CUSIP number, grouped into lots, and are marketed as mutual fund investment. Upon maturity, how long is maturity? That's got so many years to it and so forth. There is rules to the game there. The, how long does it take for a bond to mature? Come on, scribes, let me hear you. The profits are moved into a government SESTA, SESTA K trust. So there's a SESTA K and there's a SESTA KV. Keep them separate. Look at what they are. Stick with us and all shall be explained. And if you are still alive, the certified documents are then reinvested. It is the funds contained in this CQ trust that the judge, clerk, county prosecutor are really after or interested in. This trust actually pays off all of the debts, but nobody tells you that because the elite consider those assets to be their property and the central bank's Federal Reserve System is responsible for the management of those investments alongside the Treasury, various uh, IRS, Treasury, because the Treasury will have to report their accounts to the IRS. Um, on an annual basis. So there is an underpinning with the Inland Revenue Services, IRS, Treasury. Uh, you see where we're going there. So even though it's American, this helped us correlate and look and research into um, certain things, financial terms, banks and securities and bondsmen and instruments and vehicles and money and debt and credit, bankruptcy, um, etc. Social Security. Uh, SSI, SSD, Medicare, National Health, Medicaid are all financed by the trust. The government makes you pay taxes or charges you taxes and a portion of our wages supposedly pay for these services, which they can borrow at any time for any reason since they cannot access the CQ trust to finance their wars or to bail out Wall Street, Bond Street and their patron corporations. The public is encouraged to purchase all kinds of insurance protection when our trust actually pays for all physical damages, medical costs, new technology and death benefits. The hype to purchase insurance is a ploy to keep us in poverty and profit off our stupidity because the Vatican owns the controlling interest in all insurance companies. Oh, Lord. You may receive a monthly statement from a mortgage company, loan company or utility company, which usually has already been paid by the trust. Almost all of these corporate businesses double dip, double entry, but du double entry. <laughs> Easy for me to say double entry bookkeeping, double dipping, double accounting, and hope that you have been conditioned well enough by their credit scams to pay them a second time. Instead of paying that statement next time, sign it approved and mail it back to them. Food for thought, isn't it? If search research professor Richard Werner, have a look on YouTube for uh, RT News, Renegade Inc. and listen up and listen good. We've been promoting him for several years and it's nice to see others are scraping the information and uh, passing it about and using that as well. It will be included within relevant information that we've given in our, in our recent chat within the Truth Radio on Telegram. Myself, Albert and Stephen was um, present to represent for SPLs and uh, ourselves and mankind, uh, private communities, and talk about such things, a two and a half hour chat, which is available on our private domain and within our Telegram groups right now. 
So uh, respect and thanks to uh, Truth Radio for that. It's uh, relevant information is included within the video links in the comment after this live stream on SPL's Facebook is finished. You will be getting some more video links in the comments. So if you're on this live or you're on the replay and you've managed to keep up to this point, bless up and thank you. Kudos. Check the comment section and you will find two further videos to have a look at and contents to digest. If they then contact you about payment, ask them to send you a true bill instead of a statement of account and you will be glad to service and effect payment. A statement, a statement documents what was due and paid, whereas a true bill represents only what is true. We would also reference the 1882 bills of exchange and international bills of exchange for those that are in America and other such countries that have a central bank regulating their government um, legal tender and currency at moment, credit system, fiat system. Banks and utility companies have direct access into these Sesta K trusts and all they needed was our name, social security number and signature. Page 17 of 28, 11 more pages to go, yo. I told you it was big. And I don't come on often. When I do, come on, I represent well. I present well. Myself and Kevin are going to make ourselves known and um, we're going to get more interactive with you uh, over the next coming weeks um, via here, SPLS Pro Facebook, via our Telegram groups, public and private, via uh, Indiglo account on YouTube and our private domain. So now I'm going to give you further information on ecclesiastical papal trusts. We're going to go through some history. The first proclaimed trust of the new world, Unam Sanctum, the Bulla Papilla, the Romanus Pontifex, Unum Sanctum, 1302, is one of the most frightening documents of history and one of the most quoted as the primary document of the popes claiming their global power. It is an express trust deed. Those of you on our equity and trust course and looking at trusts and types of trusts and you know uh, the languages and terminology used within trusts, then this has already been given to them. They've had it some weeks and uh, if not months, and we've had this information some years, and it's about time we repeated it again in its entirety in, um, in relation to the subject matter that is at hand. The last line reads of Unum Sanctum. Furthermore, we declare, we proclaim, we define that it is absolutely necessary for salvation that every human creature be subject to the Roman pontiff. It is not only the first trust deed in history, well, alleged history, it's not actually true but with regards to the church in this um, in this area, in this jurisdiction, within this realm, it is true. But overall, I'd argue that there was uh, previous trust deeds that, uh, you know, history has deleted and chosen to forget. But um, it is not only the first trust deed in, you know, Vatican history, Catholic history, but is the largest trust ever conceived, conceived as it claims the whole planet and I, everything on it conveyed on trust. <laughs> So when we talk about Seta K and Seta KVs, here we go. Triple crown of Baal, AKA the Papal Tiara and Tyrignum, Tyrignum, triple crown of Baal. You've got Baalbek, you've got Basel, the International Bank of Settlements, which is in Basel, Basel, as I used to pronounce it, Baal, 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 Baalbek. Um, history again, Steiner, Blavatsky, Goddard, I could go into this for a lot of, but I won't. The Triple Crown of Baal, aka Papal Tiara and Tririgum. In 1302, Pope Boniface, it's not Pope Boniface, actually I've been corrected by an Italian family member, Boniface, okay, 1302, Pope Boniface issued his infamous Papal Bull, Unum Sanctum, the first express trust, he claimed of the church, he claimed control over the whole planet, which made him king of the world. In celebration, he commissioned, commissioned a gold plated headdress in the shape of a pine cone with an elaborate crown at its base. 
The pine cone is an ancient symbol of fertility and one traditional associated with Baal, B-A apostrophe A-L, as well as the cult of Sibyl. It also represents the pineal gland in the center of our brains, crystalline in nature, which allows us to source, which allows us to access, which allows us access to source. Hence the 13 foot tall pine cone in Vatican Square. Think about why the pontiffs would idolize a pine cone. The first crown of the land, Pope Boniface VIII, was the first leader in history to create the concept of a ecclesiastical trust, but the first testamentary trust through the deed and will creating a deceased estate was created by Pope Nicholas IV in 1455 through the Papal Bull Romanus Pontifex. This is only one of three papal bulls, or as they say in Italia or Latin, bulla papilla, to include the line with the incipit for a perpetual remembrance. This bull or Baal had the effect of conveying the right of use of the land as real property from the express trust unam sanctum to control of the to the control of the pontiff and his excess, successors in perpetuality. Hence, all land is claimed as crown land. This first crown is represented by the first KV trust created when a child is born. It deprives us all of beneficial entitlements and rights on the land. Now, when baby is born, what does the doctor, the midwife, the consultant, uh, not the registrar, what do the hospital um, staff say? What does the doctor say? What does the midwife say if it's a home borning incident um, prior at the point of the female ejaculation and baby coming into the world? What happens when life is given? They say what? I can see their head, his or her head. Baby is crowning. So when we talk about crowns and superior crowns, number one, note that. Number two, equity. First in time is first in line. Man is born, citizen comes later. To anchor our point of authority, authentic, and um, to have the authority to command the estate and to claim the estate, we use that, all right? And a lot of you are picking up on that and it's now being repeated and echoed. I continue on. We're going to look at the second crown of the Commonwealth. When we say Commonwealth, we mean common well. A well where you put the bucket, you get the water and all can drink from it in the village. It's a common well, a common wealth. Since so the etymological sounding of that, the sonics, the phonics and sonics of that word. The second crown was created in 1481 with the papal bull, this is called Eterni Regis, meaning the eternal crown by Pope Sixtus IV, being only the second of three papal bulls as deeds of testamentary trusts. This uh, bulla papilla created the crown of Aragon, later known as the crown of Spain, and is the highest sovereign and highest steward of all Roman slaves, subject to the rule of the Roman pontiff, the Romanus Pontifex. Spain lost the crown in 1604, when it was granted to whom? Whom was it granted to? So let's have a pause here. Have you been paying attention? Have you read our documents? Are you on our equity and trust course? King who? King somebody of England. It was granted to King James I of England by Pope Paul IV after the successful passage of the Union of Crowns or Commonwealth. In 1605, after the false flag operation of the gunpowder plot, the crown was finally lost by England in 1975 when it was returned to Spain and King Carlos I, where it remains to this day. This second crown is represented, represented, represented by the second Seta K V Trust, created when a child is born and by the sale of the birth certificate as bond to the private central bank of the nation. 
depriving us of ownership of our flesh and condemning us to perpetual servitude, slavery, as a Roman person or save, slave. What else has a sail? Shops have sails. How does a boat get propelled without a motor with a sail? The word sail, the, the sail that's on the mast. The third crown of the ecclesiastical sea. The third crown was created in 1537 by, I think, Pope Paul III. I've just written Paul III, but I believe it should be Pope Paul III. Through the papal bull convocation, also meant to open the Council of Trent. So at the beginning of this presentation, you now see, hopefully, things are now looping back round and filling in. It is the third and final testamentary deed and will of a testamentary trust set up for the claiming of all lost souls lost to the sea. S-E-A, David, not S -E. The Venetians assisted in the creation of the first Seta KV Act of 1540. To use this papal bull as the basis of the ecclesial, ecclesiastical authority of Henry VIII, this crown was secretly granted to England in the collection and reaping of the lost souls. And we look at the various uh, lineages of Kings and Henry's, you know, 1540 isn't that much prior to 1611, where you've got King James. So uh, Henry VIII, uh, um, uh, Catherine of Aragon, um, the, 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 uh, the detachment from um, the Italian Vaticano, Catholicism, England, the Anglican church, rights, titles, properties, I'm paraphrasing, but we can fill in. There's a lot of gaps in here to fill in as well. The um, the papal bull annulling um, the Magna Carta and the subsequent reissues and attempts of Magna Cartas and kings and independence and authority. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, historical content that we filled in that I can't do now, which is going to be put into this. Those that know, know, and feel free to get typing and, you know, the crown was lost in 1816 due to the deliberate bankruptcy of England and granted to the Temple Templar London Law Society, known as the IBA, the International Barristers Association, or British um, Accreditation Registry, which became known as the Crown Bar, or simply the Crown. The Templar London Law Society, IBA, BAR associations have been responsible for administering the reaping of the souls of the lost and damned, including the registration and collection of baptismal certificates representing the souls collected by the Vatican and stored in its vaults. We're just going to pause there for a minute. Let that sink in. This third crown is represented by the third Sester K or Seta KV Trust created when a child is baptized. It is the parent's grant of the baptismal certificate title to the soul to the church or register. Thus, without legal title over one's own soul, we will be not be denied legal standing and will be treated as things cargo without souls upon which the templar london law society iba bar is now legally able to enforce maritime law when you look at um, when you look at airplanes and ships and uh, passengers manifest cargo manifest manifesting we look at spiritual manifestation apparitions summons to appear in the court this occult language dark um, black's law black robes black officer this occultism of this spell casting of the language and the meaning and what we're talking about throughout this presentation you know we've more than uh, enough times given you clues as to where this comes from how it operates and the strength that it uh, employs we give life to something which is non-tangible and non-existent back at the beginning where i talked about the transcendental nonsense of uh, beliefs and religious uh, systems and uh, you know a set of kv trust is a fictional concept it is a temporary testamentary trust first created during the reign of henry the apes of england through the set of kv act of 1540 and updated by charles ii through the cqv act of 1666 wherein an estate may be effected for the benefit of a person presumed lost or abandoned at sea, therefore assumed dead, 
after seven years, additional presumptions by which such a trust may be formed were added in later statutes to include, include bankrupts, minors, incompetents, mortgages and private companies. The original purpose of a CQV trust was to form a temporary estate for the benefit of another because some event, state or affairs or condition prevented them from claiming their status as living, competent and present before a competent authority. Therefore, any claims, history, statutes or arguments that deviate in the terms of the origin and function of a CQV trust, as pronounced by these canons, is false and automatically null and void. Now, let me go back. What happened in 1600 and 1666? The plague, the bubonic plague, a great fire. We look at William the Conqueror. We look at the uh, Masonic Sun Temple in London. We look at um, 1667 when the deal was done. 1066, sorry, no, well, well, too many sixes here. Triple six in that one's just whapped my mind. Um, the 6th of June, did I not say in the beginning, they believed the prodigal son was going to return on the 6th of June, 1666. That applies that bit in with that. I know my subject matter and content in, you know, intricately inside and out. But um, uh, 1066, 1067, all right. Then we go to 1302. And then we go through the uh, the 1540s to 1666, and we look at the uh, the uh, what would we say their chronological timelines of monarchies, wars, battles, kingdoms, and we look at that as well. So, um, C when we talk of C, land, air, and water, the law of the air, the holy seas. When I went to uh, Liverpool, Alderhey on the request of Thomas and Sarah Evans to allegedly help with the um, protection and moving from the public to the private of um, baby Alfie Evans, RIP, bless his little uh, lost soul perhaps. Um, I and Andy asked the um, priest there that was dressed in black, very thin Italian priest, that he was to secure rights of passage through the holy seas, the law of the air. And he replied, the father, the papa, will not allow this. He said, it doesn't matter whether he allows it or not. We're here sent from the father today to instruct you on behalf of the set laws and the principles. Um, what did I say? Evan, the Evanses, Thomas and Sarah have asked us to come in our private capacity. I could have gone to the front of Liverpool Hospital and shouted about splspro.com being there. There was an absolute circus, a media frenzy. Let me say this as well about the Holy Seas and honourability and intent. There was I've never seen so many video cameras, satellite dishes, vans, media circus and frenzy. And we was there, we slept, we, sn we, slept. we snuck in through the back doors, um, Papillon with a man called Michael from Liverpool that facilitated all of this with the express communication of um, Thomas Evans to myself on behalf of our trust and on behalf of uh, his partner Sarah and baby Alfie and we, we did a fund me um, got some donations and travelled over a round trip of 400 and something miles across nearly 24 hours on the whim to go down and present and ask for you know rites of passage, safe passage through the holy seas. That would be through the ecclesiastical seas, the seas of commerce, the seas of space, the seas, Caesars, seas, Papa seas. And um, yeah, we could have gone in and made noise and publicized the fact we was there, but we went in a private capacity. We, uh, we diverted from the BBC, the media, the international news circus and frenzy out the front. And we went to the side and we um, were led by a man called Michael, a.k.a. Papillon, Michael Papillon. Um, is a pseudonym stage name, a given name, commonly known as Michael. And we went and we spoke to a priest. So I know firsthand um, through speaking to that um, extension of the pontiff and the priest dressed in black and um, this to be true and validated because we had some uh, intricate, uh, concise chats with him about these souls, uh, trusts, requirements, seas, um, you know, laws, areas. And, um, and and he ran off, to be fair, after calling probably the consulate 
and calling in home and he disappeared and the rest is kind of history to some extent but again first-hand knowledge as well as the, uh, the the referencing what i'm giving you now a beneficiary under estate may be either a beneficiary or a cqv trust when a beneficiary loses direct benefit of any property of the higher estate placed in a cqv trust on his behalf he does not own a cqv trust he is only the beneficiary of what the trustee of the cqv trust choose to provide as all CQV trusts are created on presumption based upon the original purpose and function, such a trust cannot be created if these presumptions can be proven not to exist. Since 1933, when a child is born in a state, estate under inferior Roman law, the three CQV trusts are created upon certain presumptions specifically designed to deny forever the child any rights of real property, any rights to be free and any rights to be known as man or woman, rather than a creature or animal by claiming and possessing their soul or spirit. The executors or administrators of the higher estate willingly and knowingly convey the beneficial entitlements of child as beneficiary into the first set of KV trust in the form of a registry number by registering the name, registering the name, not registering man. Man is not registered. There's no registering of man. Person citizenship is created. There's an event happening and the name is registered with the state. Let me clarify. Let's get that out there thereby also creating the corporate incorporated person and denying the child any rights to real property and claim the baby as chattel to the estate. The slave baby contract is then created by honoring the ancient tradition of either having the ink impression of the baby's feet onto the live birth record or a drop of its blood. So we look at the Guthrie card and the hospitals there and the Guthrie, Guthrie cards, as well as tricking the parents into signing the baby away through, through the deceitful legal meanings on the live birth record, which is a promissory note converted into a slave bond, sold to the private reserve bank of the estate and then conveyed into a second and separate CQV trust per child owned by the bank. When the promissory note reaches maturity and the bank is un unable to seize the slave child, a maritime lien or lien, as you say, uh, I say, lien, is lawfully issued to salvage the lost property and is monetized as currency issued in series against the CQV trust. Claim the child's soul via the baptismal certificate since 1540 in the creation of the first CQV Act deriving its power from the papal bull of Roman cult leader, Pope Paul III, 1540. When a child is baptized and a baptismal certificate is issued, the parents have gifted, granted and conveyed the soul of a baby to a third CQV trust owned by Roman cult, which, was, which has held this valuable property in its vaults ever since 1815. This third crown of the Roman cult and third CQV trust representing ecclesiastical property has been managed by the Templar London Law Society, IBABAR, as the reconstituted gala responsible as grim reapers for reaping the souls. Each set of gay V trust created since 1933 represents one of the three crowns representing the three claims of property of the Roman cult, real property on earth, personal property, body, and ecclesiastical property, soul. So they've got earth, body, and soul covered there. Each corresponds exactly to the three forms of law available to the gala of the Temple London Law Society, IBABAR courts. Corporate commercial law, judge is the landlord, maritime and canon law, judge is the banker and Talmudic law, judge is the priest. Hague Conference on Private International Law, Convention on the Law Applicable to Trusts and on their recognition concluded 1st of July 1985. Set a KV Trust. A set of KV Trust is also known by, known by several other pseudonyms such as Term of Life, term of life or years or pure autre v or fidi commissionary trust or foreign citizens trust or secret trust is a pseudo form of trust first formed in the 16th century under henry the eighth of england 
on one or more presumptions, including but not limited to one or more persons presumed wards, infants, idiots, lost or abandoned at sea, and therefore assume presumed dead after seven years. Additional presumptions by which such a trust may be legally formed were added in later statutes to include bankruptcy, incapacity, mortgages and private companies. In the terms of the evidential history of the formation of the SETA KV trusts, let me just check the volume. The first set of KV trusts were formed, trusts formed were through an act of Henry VIII of England in 1540 and later wholly corrupted, whereby the poor people of England, after having all their homes, goods and wealth seized in 1535, under the guise of small religious estates, under £200 were granted the welfare or commonwealth of a sestake, use benefit of simply an estate with which to live, work and to bequeath via a written will. And in 1666, Westminster, the ruling classes passed the infamous Proof of Life Act, also called the Setter KV Act, whereby the poor and disenfranchised that had not proven to Westminster and the courts they were alive were henceforth to be declared dead at law and therefore lost, abandoned, and their property to be managed in their absence. This supremely morally repugnant act, which remains in force today, we can see, we would argue through language, etymology, and the presentation I have given you, and the food for consideration and thought there, is the birth of Mundi, M-U-N-D-I, and the infamous occult rituals of the British courts in the wearing of black robes and other paraphernalia in honouring the dead, and... In 1707, Westminster under Queen Anne extended the provisions of proof of life and Sester KV, or Setta KV, extending the use of such structures ultimately for the corporate and other franchise purposes. <clears throat> this wicked, profane and completely sacrilegious act in direct defiance to all forms of Christian morals and <clears throat> rule of law has remained a cornerstone of global banking and financial control to the 21st century. So there you've got 1540, well, 1535, 1540, Seta KV, 1666, Seta KV and 1707, In 1796, King George III duty was applied to estates pure ultra, ultra, ultra v for the first time. And in 1837, the amendments to the nature of wills that if a person under estate pure ultra v setter kv did not make proper will and such property would be granted to the executors and or administrators. So do you see why SPLS Pro gives you a free last will and testament when you come to our private domain and you donate 12 promises for the year, one promise, one pound promise a month, 25 pence a week. We give you an instrument roughly worth on the shelf price of 20 promises, 20 pounds known as a last will and testament, not just because of when you go into a court legal realm and your estate is viewed as intestacy, intestacy, and look at what that word means, intestacy, intestate, okay? But you need to express a will and you need to uh, do that for various reasons. But one of them is in 1837 and the amendments to the nature of wills, that if a person under an estate pure ultra V, set a KV, did not make a proper will, then such property would be granted to the executors and administrators. Let's just stop. Just have a think. If you haven't got and you haven't expressed the last will and testament and you don't know why you haven't and you haven't got good reason for not doing so, then we would urge you, I would urge you, SPLSPro.com would urge you, no matter where you are, to now consider at the earliest point of convenience expressing as a test or as a testamentary, you know, last will and testament and get it done as soon as possible. You don't have to come to us. You don't have to listen to us, but go and check it out independently Look at the information that's been given to you freely. Yes. And, um, and then get back to me as to why you wouldn't. If you have and you've listened to us and you've done that, we've, um, we've got uh, evidences from uh, one of our scribes in Scotland 
that expressed the will just in January because she'd listened and taken the information inside, cognised what we said, and she's passed away, dear um, Carol, uh, Nonna Yomas, one of my scribes on YouTube, and that last will and testament as the testator, as the, you know, expressed by her, has come into play and protected her estate. And she, that was six months after, so that's how close it was. God bless your little cotton socks and thank you for your support. Mum and Nonna, Scottish Nonna. And um, that shows you, you know, uh, it's never too late to do one, but the earlier you do one, the more protected and proactive you're being. In terms of the evidential history of the operation and any form of relief or remedy associated with CQV Trust, taking into account all statutes referencing CQV prior to 1540 are a deliberate fraud and proof of the illegitimacy, illegitimacy of Westminster statutes. The first act outlined in CQV Trust is deliberately hidden under the claimed statutes of the reign of King Richard III. What? Yes, in 1483. <laughs> Whereby the act, still in force, states that all conveyances, now conveyances aren't just motor cars and vehicles, they are paper paper conveyances, paper special purpose vehicles. Vehicles are not just motorized uh, um, uh, pleasure crafts and uh, propulsion systems. Conveyances are also um, um, 2D paper fictional formats and, uh, and, and deeds, all right? So uh, states that all conveyances and transfers and use of property is good, even through, even though a purchaser may be unaware, it is effectively under CETA-K use subject to a CQV trust. The act also gives a vague and challenging path of relief that if one is of complete mind, not an infant, where do we find infants, infantry in the army, bullet catchers, first line of defense, ungodly, unholy war, warfare and warship, not an infant and not under financial duress, then any property under CQV trust is rightfully theirs for use and the second act outlining CQ V Trust is deliberately hidden under the reign of Henry VII in 1488, didn't you know? Yes, you do. Permitted lords to render any attempt by people classed as wards to demonstrate their freedoms, to demonstrate their freedom useless, and that such lords may use writs and other devices to force such people back to being complain, com compliant. Wards, the wardens can do this. Poor slaves, who do you have in a prison that controls and monitors the uh, inmates, the warden? Yes, poor slaves. The only remedy under this act was if a ward demonstrated the waste of the Lord as to the property and energy seized from the poor, ignorant slaves. So you have wards, wards in hospitals, wards of the state, wardens, all right, uh, a neighborhood warden. The third act outlining the operation of the Seta KV only hidden this, this time as an estate pure ultra V was in 1741, under whereby one who was knowledgeable of the Seta KV slavery system could between the ages of 18 to 20 seek to recover such property under CQV and cease to be a slave. However, the same act made law that after 20 years, the remedy for such recovered recovery was no longer available. <laughs> uh, despite the fact that the existence of CQV trust is denied and Westminster and banks are swore to lie, obstruct, hide and all cost of the existence of the foundations of the global banking slavery. In terms of essence, in terms of essential elements concerning CQV trusts, a CQV trust may only exist for 70 years, being the traditional accepted life expectancy of the estate, and a beneficiary under estate may be a beneficiary or CQV trust when a beneficiary loses direct benefits of any property of the higher estate placed in CQV trust on their behalf. They do not own the CQV trust and are only the beneficiary of what the trustees of the CQV trust choose to provide them. And the original purpose and function of a CQV trust was to form a temporary estate for the benefit of another because some, offense, stay, some event, state of affairs or condition prevented them from claiming their status as living, competent and present before a competent authority. Therefore, any claims 
history, statutes or arguments that deviate in terms of the origin and function of a CQV trust as pronounced by these canons is false and automatically null and void. The trust corpus created by a CQV is also known as the estate from two Latin words, e statio, meaning by virtue of decree, statute or judgment. However, as the estate is held in temporary, not permanent trust, a corporate person as beneficiary is entitled only to equitable title and the use of property rather than legal title and therefore ownership of the property. The corporation, also known as body corporate estate and trust corpus of a CQV trust, possesses valid legal personality. Person as beneficiary is entitled to equitable title. Yeah, we need to look at legal title and equitable title, split title, co-beneficiary of the public uh, legal trust, commercial trust, because beneficiary equity regards the beneficiary as the true owner. Trustee only has legal possessory titles. Beneficiary has the equitable title. The set law hands over the titles and remains, you know, in a different position within private trusts and so forth. This is exclusively applicable to this area here. This isn't trust law fundamental outlines of the property of any estate created through a temporary testamentary trust may be regarded under CQV use by the corporate person, even if another name or description is used to define the type of trust or use. Therefore, CQ use is not a person, but a right, and therefore, therefore a form of property. In 1534, prior to the first CQV Act of 1540, Henry VIII declared the first CQV type estate with the Act of Supremacy which created the Crown Estate. In 1604, 70 years later, James I of England modified the estate, listen to the years and the time there, um, as the Crown Union, Union of Crowns. By the 18th century, the Crown was viewed as a company. However, by the start of the 19th century, around 1814 onwards, upon bankruptcy of the company, 14, 1814, 1815, it became the fully private Crown Corporation controlled by the European private banker families. Since 1581, there has been a second series of CQV estates concerning the property of persons and rights which migrated to the United States for administration, including in 1651, the Act for Settlement of Ireland, 1651 to 52, which introduced the concept of settlements. Now, man settles, pioneers settles, finances are settled. That will matter is settled. Settled settlement is a word and terminology which is broadly used in many different contexts. But in this terminology, in 1651, the Act for the Settlement of Ireland, which introduced the concept of settlements, enemies of the state and restrictions of movement in states of emergency. And in 1861, the Emergency Powers Act. And in 1931, the Emergency Relief and Con Construction Act. And in 2001, the Patriot Act. Since 1591, there has been a third series of Seta KV estates concerning the property of sole and ecclesiastical rights which migrated into the United States for administration, including in 1661, the Act of Settlement, 1871, the District of Columbia Act, in 1941, the Lend-Lease Act. What a presentation this is. This is proper full ball. We are, uh, we are I don't know how many hours into this now. But um, SPLS Pro, Man David, our uh, administrators, Kevin and I, are proud to present this, um, this information for your consideration in its entirety with substance over the form. And um, we shall continue to expand upon this as we are doing in the private, publicly. Um, questions and comments in the Facebook video comment section um, within the YouTube comment video comment section when I premiere it on YouTube and within our telegram groups and splspro.com. By 1815 and the bankruptcy of the Crown and Bank of England by the Rothschilds, for the first time the CQV Trust of the United Kingdom became assets 
placed in private banks, effectively becoming private trusts or FIDE commissionary trusts, FIDE commissionary trusts, administered by commissioners, <coughs> guardians. From 1835 and the Wills Act, these private trusts have been also considered secret trusts whose existence does not need to be divulged. When we look at bankruptcy, we generally go to the 1930s. We look at the Gold Standards Act, the amendment to the Gold Standards Act. And if you watch the video of which is in the description on bills, notes, promissory checks and that in a, alongside the Lex Mercatoria video between these three massive monolithic mammoth presentations regarding the sleeping giant known as the topic we're on today then you will see how this is very much provable real articulate and in the annals of history irrefutable unequivocally true and um, to our knowledge um, provable and articulated through the evidences that we have so 1815 bankruptcy if you've never heard of that and look at that for UK. From 1917 and 1918, with the enactment of the Sedition Act and the Trading with Enemy Act in the United States and through the United Kingdom, the citizens of the Commonwealth and the United States became effectively enemies of the states and aliens. You may have had the term, heard the term illegal alien if you haven't been naturalized and swore your oath of allegiance to the flag of Washington DC District Columbia. Aliens, alien, unalienable rights, alien, at lien, unalienable, unalienable, lien, aliens, uh, again, words, massive, Plan ET, planet, ET, extraterrestrial, plan et, planet, plan ET. Um, too many words and... Uh, so uh, enemies, aliens, which in turn converted the FIDE commissionary, private secret trust to foreign sitters, private international trusts. In 1931, the Roman cult also known as the Vatican, created the Bank for International Settlements in Basel, Basel for the control of claimed property of associated private central banks around the world. Upon the deliberate bankruptcy of most countries, private central banks were installed as administrators and the global SETA KV foreign citizens trust system was implemented from 1933 onwards. Those of you looking for the remedy with regards to all of this, we are on it and we can prove how you would look to move to the private, claim your equitable title, equitable relief, equitable interest, stick with SPLS Pro, the originators, not the imitators, because we have all of the substance and the, um, and the information of which to hold these shizens to account and put our claim of right in and get this done in the private and move from the general public and a, <laughs> yes, war and go over and call the truce of trust and reside upon the, um, the sovereign Republic of New Britain, which we have created, okay? And this information is given to you freely to let you know that you can trust us. We have what it takes we've done the due diligence we've done the work and um, we want to be one of the first to put this out there in its entirety like no other has done since 1933 as we've mentioned when a child is born in a state under inferior roman law those three trusts are created i've said that so that's a repetition of information the birth certificate issued under Roman law represents the modern equivalent to the settlement certificates of the 17th century and signifies the holder as a pauper and effectively a Roman slave. The birth certificate has no direct relationship to the private secret trust control by the private banking network, nor can it be used to force the administration of a state or nation to divulge the, assist, the existence of these secret trusts. As the SETA KV trusts are created as private secret trusts on multiple presumptions, including the ongoing bankruptcy of certain national estates, they remain the claimed private property of the Roman cult banks and therefore cannot be directly claimed or used. While the private secret trusts of the private central banks cannot be directly addressed, they are still formed on certain presumptions of law, including claimed ownership of the name, the body, the mind and soul of infants, a.k.a. men and women. 
each and every man and woman has the absolute right to rebuke and reject such false presumptions. So we would argue that uh, visiting our um, literature library and re resourceful and talking with us about one, one special instrument known as uh, created by Frank O. Collins, uh, the ecclesiastical deed poll and why you would no matter what race religion uh, you are on this landmass England and Britain express and rebut the presumptions by um, executing as a deed an ecclesiastical deed poll because whether you're Hindu Sikh Muslim um, Judaism Christian Catholic whatever it is if you're you and your family hold a birth certificate for your person with the with the release of this information and me going over it again and summarizing it and using it as part of the equity the jedi orientation equity and trust course that we are running in the private via spls pro those 24 pages and about um 10,000 words that I've given you so far would be good reason for all that consider themselves Anglo, non-Anglo, Christian, Catholic, non-Christian and Catholic, all souls that hold a birth certificate for their person and for their family and their offspring would now need to consider executing as a deed the ecclesiastical deed poll and that will then rebut that i shouldn't have said that i've given that away people are going to take that and start selling this information if you get that just say the governor knows what's going on spls pro know what's going on the admins know what's going on yeah we know and we give it away for free don't pay you two thousand five thousand and etc there is a way to get out of this. There is a universal non-sectarian remedy for all. All we want is your love, support, and intent. You share this video. You share it far and wide. You make notes. You make references. All right. You download the audio. You listen to it as you're going to sleep. Yeah. You do whatever you want with it. This is out in the public. This is a gift from our foundation, education, private trust, educational private trust. I've been instructed by the Most High and on the principles of if hermeticism okay universal laws and um the ethics of tibetan buddhism and the originating philosophy from the spiritualism and the spirits guide me um it's not hokum um coincidence coincidence uh, syncretism synchronicity what i do for others i do unto myself what i inwardly project man you know i outwardly what i inwardly manifest i outwardly attract what i inwardly project I outwardly attract this is the law of attraction this is the power of intent this is sharing and caring there is thousands of hours by tens if not hundreds of man's gone into this presentation it is not the sole work of i i'm mentioning and dropping names left right and center books publications and um, this is not any you know thing that i'm looking for glory for as i said at the beginning it's about time we got this sorted and we got the basics covered as intricate and as extensive as it is within this comprehensive summarization of the uh, of the sinful nature of the legal Roman Templar IBA BAR system. And I'm not saying all the names that I've mentioned are honourable and full of intent and may not be double agents or agents of self and uh, interested in their own um, private domains and making money and funds, but. Uh, as long as I do it this way, I think all will be protected and all will be well. And um, this information is highly coveted, highly secret. Um, and it takes a lot of us working as one to sort this out. And you see why I didn't want to just put this in text post because you wouldn't have read it. It's important, articulate information. It's taken me several hours to go through. I'm trying to go in a, in a, in a logical pathway. So each section you know has a segue for the other and is relevant to um and present to you our competence our in, our articulation our love our intent the clean hands the honor the integrity and we have to give back in order to receive you must give first how many more pages four pages left With no drink of a sore throat i need a wee I'm going to sacrifice all of that. I need to open the door for my princess and queen that will be home in the next 10 minutes. <sighs> I've tried to end this by quarter past three. It's now 10 past three and I'm four pages short of my target. So um, forgive me for that. Let me see if this is relevant before I get on to. Oh, 
Yeah, we can do it. Excuse me, I have a cold. I don't need to be rude. I'm stuffed up. Guilty or not guilty? That is the question. To be or not to be? Do you know what you're actually saying when uttering these words? Many do not think twice when pleading not guilty in a court. However, do you truly understand what this means and the impact it has on the matter at hand? The mere fact that a defendant is attending a court is an admission of guilt as an unresolved controversy exists and the accuser, e.g. the plaintiff, believes a wrong exists and requires resolution or compensation from the defendant. Hence, by the act of turning up, the defendant is already guilty. The presence of the body, some might say, corrects the error of the name. First of all, what is court? Simply put, you're already in a court when interacting with the opposite party via your paperwork. You're there to make law contract. Hence, the first court appearance has already been held with the opposite party. And the reason for a court appearance in a county, state, federal court is to adjudicate on the controversy created by the defendant according to the plaintiff. plaintiff. Pleading not guilty. You know, human rights and certain things say everybody has the right for innocence. The accused has the right to remain silent. You have the right to be considered innocent until the burden of proof. Yes, and the, they have to present the material facts of the matter. You don't need to inform on yourself. Anything you do say may be taken down and used in evidence against you in a court of <coughs> law. Well, I'll keep quiet and I'll leave the burden of proof upon the claimant. You know, I'm innocent. Prove that I'm guilty. Yeah. Where does the word guilty come from? From canon law. Here the word guilty originates from the 14th century English Dutch gilde. Um, Chiron last now stepping into the flow from 13th century Venetian Italian gilda, meaning guild payment in gold debt or fine owed to the guild. The word gilda itself derived from the 8th century Khazarian Magyar Hungarian languages, kulta meaning gold. In the Finnish language today, kulta still means gold and kilta means guild. Now, what does not guilty mean? When a non-guild member of the private bar guild is present in one, one of the guild buildings dealing with the primary business of the bar being organized, global profit from crime jobs, the private bar guild members seek to force either a plea of guilty or not guilty. A plea of guilty in a building contrived by, or a venue a court by the controlled by the private bar guild is equivalent to saying, I will pay. And tacit consent of liability for a debt or fine owned to the guild and his consent to the lawful detainment of the flesh of the accused as surety until the debt or fine is paid. Or... A plea of not guilty in a building controlled by the private bar guild is equivalent to saying I refuse to pay with the presumption of liability for a debt or fine owed to the guild, but belligerent refusal to pay, therefore permitting the lawful detainment of the flesh of the accused as surety until the debt or fine is paid. In summary, by pleading not guilty, what is being said thus becomes I am guilty of the charge as I am here as a defendant, but I'm refusing to pay or resolve the controversy with the plaintiff. Thus creating further controversy that gives the adjudicator jurisdiction. It is then a matter for the adjudicator to, or arbiter to determine how much the defendant must pay based on evidence. Of course, like the casino, some defendants must win in order to keep the stream of clientele, uh, clientele, otherwise the casino would go broke. Therefore, the controversy needs to be resolved before the appearance with an adjudicator, as many articles on you know, this topic we have presented suggest and have presented to you. We have discharge charges effectively. We have reset relationships within trusts. We have won and articulated. We have testimony, evidence to prove this. Kevin and Graham's work with the DWP and the agencies, my work, my presentations, um, are discharging charges on a, uh, in a trial at Oxford Magistrates with Brother Thomas there. So this example shows an alternative way to engage with an opposite party in court by giving notice of a private side remedy of a private side remedy making all parties whole so you're going to argue your case do you know why they welcome this approach have a think on that information and links for templar london law society iba bar information claim 
In the United States, the lawyers, VAR, stands for British Accredited Registry and is part of a property grabbing conspiracy. Origin. One of the more unusual and complicated theories associated with the sovereign citizen <laughs> oxymoron and tax protester movements is the belief that lawyers who are a member of bar associations in the United States are in fact agents of the British Crown and do not have legitimate status in American courts. This theory is partly informed by false but widely reported claims that the word bar in this context is an acronym for British Accreditation Register. Here's how the elaborate and confusing theory is outlined in an anonymously authored essay called Hiding Behind the Bar, which has been republished and shared in tax protester and sovereign citizen <coughs> circles for more than a decade. During the middle 1600s, the Crown of England established a formal registry in London where barristers' lawyers were ordered by the Crown to be accredited. The establishment of the first international bar association allowed barrister lawyers from all nations to be formally recognised and accredited by the only recognised accreditation society. From this, the acronym BAR was established, denoting informally the British Accredited Registry, whose members became a powerful and integral force within the International Bar Association, IBA, Although this has been denied repeatedly as to its existence, the acronym BAR stood for the British Barrister Lawyers who were members of the larger International Barristers Association. Almost every part of this is factually inaccurate. For one thing, the International Bar Association was founded in 1947, not in the 1600s. Secondly, we could find no evidence of the existence of a professional association for lawyers called the British Accredited, Accredited Registry, either in 2021 or at uh, 2018 to 21 or at any previous time in history. A History of the American Bar, a 1911 book by the Pulitzer Prize winning legal scholar Charles Warren contains no mention of any British accredited registry or British accreditation registry with accredited and accreditation being used variously in different versions of this conspiracy theory. It would also make little sense for a group of lawyers in the 17th century England to form a group describing itself as British Great Britain, composed of England, Wales and Scotland, does not have and has never had a unified court system, instead being separated into two systems, England and Wales and Scotland. In fact, Great Britain itself was not even formed, created until 1707, when the Acts of Union joined the Kingdom of Scotland with the Kingdom of England, which included Boyo, Wales. But more broadly, this theory offers a confused summary of the history of the bar. In the Middle Ages, lawyers in London established four inns of court, Lincoln Inn, the Inner Temple of the Middle Temple and Gray's Inn. These were physical buildings, but more figuratively, they were also the professional associations for lawyers working in the more important English courts. A barrister was a legal expert or advocate who has been called to the bar. This is a metonomic phrase which is rooted in the physical barrier that was present in a courtroom to separate fully qualified lawyers entitled to plead cases before a judge from, roughly speaking, trainee lawyers and members of the public. In modern times, this physical barrier generally separates participants in a trial, such as lawyers, clerks, defendants, the jury and the judge, from the gallery boats, gallows, gallery, in which members of the public and the news media sit in. So someone who has been called to the bar has been given the right to advocate before a judge and is thereby known as a barrister, a barista, a barrister. A bar association is roughly speaking a professional association for lawyers akin to a guild. In some jurisdictions, bar associations are limited to barristers as opposed to solicitors, a different type of lawyer whereas in others they are open to all members of the legal profession. In some jurisdictions, a bar association is the body that licenses and regulates legal professionals, and in others it is merely a professional association. 
the bar conspiracy theory essay goes on to say when america was still a chartered group of british colonies under patent established in what was formerly named the British Crown Territory of New England, the first British accredited registry, BAR, was established in Boston during 1761 to attempt to allow only accredited barristers, lawyers, access to the British courts of New England. This was the first attempt to control who could represent defendants in the court or court at or within the bar in America. Today, each corporate state in America has its SIC, own bar association, i.e. the Florida bar or the California bar that licenses that license government officer attorneys, not lawyers. In reality, the United States courts only allow their officer attorneys to freely enter within the bar while prohibiting those learned of the law lawyers to do so. They prevent advocates, lawyers, counsellors, barristers and solicitors from entering through the outer bar. Only licensed bar attorneys are permitted to freely enter within the bar, separating the people from the bench because all bar attorneys are officers of the court itself. Does that tell you anything? <clears throat> <laughs> in 1930 essay published in the Cornell Law Review, page 393, refers to a bar association having been established in Boston in 1761. But remember that a bar association is no more than a kind of guild for lawyers. Bar is not an acronym for British accredited registry because that acronym is a fabrication, as with many sovereign citizen theories, oxymoron. The essay builds on the shaky foundations of an inaccurate account of the history of bar associations in the United States and draws uh, conclusions about the function and legal status of lawyers. Many of these claims are based on the etymolo etymology of certain words rather than their modern meaning. For example, the author of the essay referenced the above presents the origins of the word attorney, citing Webster's 1828 dictionary definition as in the feudal law, to turn or transfer homage and service from one lord to another. That essay also proclaims, here's why the whole word games gets, here's where the whole word games gets really tricky. In each state, every licensed bar attorney calls himself an attorney at law. Look at the definitions above and see for yourself that an attorney at law is nothing more than an attorney, one who transfers allegiance and property to the ruling landowner. That passage is false. Whatever the origins of the word attorney might be, the modern definition of that word is much broader. Miriam Webster defines an attorney as simply one who is legally appointed to transact business on another's behalf. In common American parlance, attorney is used interchangeably with lawyer. This fixation on word origin leads to something like a game of telephone in the logic of the conspiracy theory with false conclusions being drawn from inaccurate or incomplete premise. Here's more examples summarised from the essay. Attorneys often give them themselves title of Esquire. In feudal England, an Esquire or Squire was a kind of property manager for a wealthy landowner. Esquires used to be responsible for attornment, which in feudal England involved transferring land and property between lords. Therefore, lawyers who describe themselves as attorneys or have the title Esquire are sworn oath officers of the state whose sole authority is to transfer your property to their landowner employer. The historical origins of the word Esquire did have to do with the transfer of property between feudal landowners, but that was hundreds of years ago. Um, William the Conqueror, 1066, uh, Hereditament, like land titles such things as around then the doomsday book this argument is roughly analogous to claiming that because the title phd derives from the latin philosopher doctor doctor of philosophy microbiologists with phd at the end of their names have no legal right to conduct scientific research because they are actually philosophers and not scientists a bar British accredited registry licensed attorney is not an advocate, the theory goes on to falsely claim. So how can he do anything other than what his real purpose is? He can't plead on your behalf because that would be a conflict of interest. He can't represent the Crown ruling government as an official officer at the time he is allegedly representing a defendant. 
his sworn duty as a bar attorney is to transfer your ownership, rights, titles and allegiance to landowners. When you hire a bar attorney to represent you in their court, you have hired an officer to that court whose sole purpose and occupation is to transfer what you have to the creator and authority of that court. It is not clear what the origins of the fabricated acronym are, but British Accredited Registry was invoked as early as 2001 by Austin Gary Cooper, a long-time <coughs> sovereign citizen activist in 2003. A US District Court in Colorado barred Cooper and his wife Martha Cooper from selling advice on how to avoid paying federal income tax after the couple set up groups called Taking Back America and the 10 Foundation, which advised their paying customers that they could renounce their United States citizenship, call themselves American citizens instead and escape their tax obligations. In 2006, Cooper was given a six month prison sentence for criminal contempt after failing to comply with that court order, which obliged him to hand over the names of his customers along with requirements. During court proceedings, Cooper accused the judge of treason and called him a Nazi bar steward and a British accredited registry lawyer saying, you people are going to destroy our country, B-A-R, British accredited registry bar associations, you're going to destroy our country. Now, with that said, I have found evidences, um, and I'm not going to screen share right now because I haven't got the pages open, but within splspro.com and um, our community i have a forum dedicated to uh, exposing london inns court the bar exam if you use your own diligence and research and look at um, the london law templar society um, and look at the information that i've presented to you today I will endeavour to quickly find that post because I found evidences to the contrary of what is said within that, um, you know, excerpt from the sovereign citizens uh, post there. So if my uh, laptop has power and I can search articulately before we close down, um, I shall uh, endeavour to show you that. And then we're going to get off because my princess and queen are due back imminently. IBA, let me try IBA, that should search it quickly. But it might find any word with IBA in. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Thank you for sharing in advance. Thank you for your comments that you're going to give. And um, I will let you know when this has been premiered on YouTube if you want to come back and uh, re-digest it but if you've got that much spare time upon your hands brilliant <laughs> i hope i've done a good deed today i believe i have i hope you've enjoyed the show there we go i've got the pages open just let me begin to search now and let me get some keywords from the document happen there <clears throat> and, um, you know, I'll just do a bit of screen share so you might want to fast forward if you're on the replay I'll just have a break go and get a drink sit down and relax enjoy the silence the brains are going oh David Governor, you've really gone done it now, my son. <laughs> the cat is out the bag. Searching now. Bear with me. Who shall be revealed? And look at the comments. Still on, yeah. Big job. Hello to James and Lisa, Louise. Let's do some wavings. Margaret, Lindsay. 
Louise, I'd say definitely not by what I've just uh, what I've just given you. You need to watch the video again. I'm not going to answer that, but UCC 1-308, um, that's good to use for, um, that's great to use for um, uh, retainments of right on paperwork by doing a, by using UCC 1-308, yes. Hello to Claire, Michael. You can use that, yes. Um, I would argue that that's a, a great way to go. All right. I've got too many search results, bear with me. Hello to the new scribes, the new members of uh, our Facebook trust and also on Indiglo. Welcome. Thank you for the channel supporters. I'm going to get straight off after this. Ready? Something's happening with my internet. It's exceedingly slow. Too many things going off. I need. I still need that wee. I am pinching. A little bladder the size of a walnut. Hmm. It's a peer. My search functions are not working. I'm gonna have to do this another way. I'm gonna have to do a manual search, but it is worthy of uh, staying on for and having a loop. I'll just do it this way, going into uh, the forum themselves. I manually eyeball it. I need to do some maintenance on the uh, forums and get them to uh, get back into line. Sometimes our searches uh, fall out of place and they need to be, there's so much information in there. They need to be re-indexed. Oh, now it's telling me I'm not logged in. After doing all of that, that's, uh, that's just incredible. <laughs> Let me log in. You've got some gremlins in the place. Go to my profile and we'll look at my posts, what I've done. We'll find them that way. You might have to wait a couple more minutes and then that will be the end of the presentation. Like I say, fast forward till you um, skip along till you see me screen sharing and then you will get the, uh, the information regarding this. I have got slow internet and I've got a lot to look through. So patience is indeed virtue. I know it's um, about a month ago. So I just, uh, yeah, bear with. Maxims of Law, Bouvier's 1856 Law Dictionary. We look at Black's Law for Dictionaries, definitions, implied meaning. We look at Church Dictionaries. We look at Black's Law. We look at Bouvier's. We look at Miriam's. We look at, we've got many, many places. When we're looking and discovering law interpretations, uh, meanings, definitions, what we presume, you know, for the purposes of clarity and the avoidances of doubt. Let me take that off now, getting warm. Hot head. So, yes, it's uh, good to have these arguments. 
Not everybody sees eye to eye. So we put it blend black and white, matter of fact, is the best way to do it. You know, you've got to look at and clarify how are they speaking? What are they speaking? What styles? What language? So easy just, just to ask. And then you know where the implied meanings and definitions are coming from, what dictionary they're using, what words are there, and the, you know, origin, person, Latin, English, legalese, legalese, the language that looks like English, writes like English, sounds like English, but it's a whole different language coming from you know, a whole different uh, dictionary, implied meanings and definitions. So we do not assume and presume. We like to know. We like to get clarity, clarification, freedom of information, requests, you know, um, how we articulate information and clarification. Okay, so it's... Uh, the language of the legal commercial side, language of the courts, language of the church, language of the financial institution. It's not something that we uh, we think we know. We look, we look at the uh, various publications and dictionaries that I've given you there as well. Um, articles, references. We ask for clarification. We go to the government's own sites. We ask officers and troopers. We get them to confirm. We ask officers that are writing to us, conditional acceptances, proof of claim, proof of authority. We point out what language we are using, commanding, interpretation acts. So there's a lot to, to be considered there. Chattel, you know, in itself, cattle, chattel. why they use certain words in certain jurisdictions and why they cross over. Etymology is, a, is very relevant, history, language, the church, the establishment and the banking industry all have their own separate languages. So then when we see them repeated, the commonalities there, we obviously look at that and see why boats, romance, water, electricity, you know, it's all uh, relevant and food for thought, some would argue, and they'd like to say, but then why wouldn't we? Capital, styles, ancient Latin, dog Latin, pig Latin. It's, it, why would they have such um, styles, languages and interpretations? It's not by chance. It's not by coincidence. It's designed. It's a system. And... Um, it's to uh, deceive very much so. Let me just open another page as well for my search options now because I didn't notice in my hurry that I was not logged in. So whilst I'm manually looking, I can't seem to find it now. I got it. Crown crowns two months ago. I got you. A bar IBA. Where are you? The crown crowns. Is so IBA in that forum there. B-A-R IBA in the forum, the crown crowns. We're off. Our standards board evidences to the contrary of what's just been said. The barristers, yeah, and um, two months ago, say year of little faith, it does work. I know. Incredibly slow today. What's watching? What you're doing? I'm doing housework. Listening, my well, sister Claire. I'll speak to you very, very shortly. I can't see all the comments. I can only see a few. Good lord. Close some pages down.
I need a drink. I need a wig. I need some food. I need to blow my nose. Here we go, fam. And like you'll see, um, I will share this screen now, but I can't share everything because we're a private domain, so I can only share what I've done. These are all by me. City of London Corporation, master of the roles. Right. Bespoke forums with certain topics in that we can then explore, which stays there, unlike Facebook, where the feed rolls down and you've got the files and documents for reference here. We've got things that are... Let just see who's in here. It's all me, I do believe. Right, let's go to screen share. Then we've done. We are finished. Keep going to press Telegram instead of uh, Zoom because they're both blue. Screen share. Thank you very much. One more person. Share screen. This one. Sure. We're on. Let's go to the top. It's called Bar IBA in the forum, the Crown Crowns. So I've got all of this. I want you to have a consideration. That's what I've just read out. Lawsociety.org.uk, address 113 Chancery Lane, London. I found that. So London Knights Templar, London Province of Knights Templar, LondonKnightsTemplar.com. All right, uh, and that's got welcome. I wish you a warm welcome to the website for the London province of the United Religious, Military and Masonic Orders of the Temple and of St. John of Jerusalem, Palestine, Rhodes and Malta in England and Wales and provinces overseas, or as it is more simply known, the Knights Templar, like Freemasonry. The order has a number of provinces across the country, the province of London. So if you look for LondonKnightsTemplar.com, go and read that for yourself. The Temple Church London. The Temple Church remains for the moment closed to the public. All right. The, uh, those living working in the Temple Chambers wish to enter the church for private prayer. This may be done Monday to Friday, 12 till 2. Please contact the Vergner on, there's his number, to arrange access. Our number one priority is the safety and well-being of our congregation and college. colleagues, the templechurch.com. Check it out. The Temple Church Inner London. Um, religious site, website, address, One Inner Temple Lane, London, all right, EC4Y1AF, Masonic Sun Temple. This is interesting where you find the location of the London uh, Masonic Sun Temple and uh, it being not in uh, a certain part of London near Chancery, Fetter Lane, when it was uh, found, the Honourable Society of the Middle Temple, Inner Temple Gardens, okay. Talk of temples. Directions, that's posted a couple of times, I believe. I don't know why that's done that, I'm gonna scroll on. Blackstone Chambers, black, black, black law, that was interesting, I just honorable society of the Inner Temple. What's going on here? Yeah, list of currently disciplined practitioners, justice.gov.uk. These practitioners were expelled from practice prior to January 13th, 2012. The term expelled has been replaced by the term disbarred, which has the same meaning and effect. So disbarred, bar, barrister, interesting post. The Bar Standards Board, look at that, www.barstandards.com. Um, board.org.uk barristers record the barristers register so they have a bar they have a bar exam they have a barristers register the barristers register bar standards board so that was i just found some information just as i was interested in what's going off and what bar is being disbarred and the bar i couldn't find anything other than bar exam and um what barristers are and uh, BAR standards boards, uh, bar standard dashboard, you know, for the bar. And there is a bar exam, but uh, International Barristers Association and the British Barristers Association to do with 
those areas that I've said, and inner temples, lamb chambers, arbitration chambers, eh? Lamb, <laughs> like lambs to the slaughter. I don't know why that's posted so many times. The Honourable Society of the Middle Temple. Have a look in London, get some maps up, have a look at where everything is and uh, the location of it and uh, the King's Colleges, the temple, the names of the streets, the London Knights Templar, still all relevant and real, can prove most of what we say, why we think that. So um, amongst everything else I've given you, so I'm going to say thank you, good night, good day, good evening, no matter where you are, what time it is, good all, and um, thank you. Hope this has been informative, entertaining and beneficial. That's my princess. We shall exit there and say good night. God bless. Ciao, Bello.